The Pepsi 400, a July 4th holiday tradition, moved to October due to Florida's midsummer wildfires. But tonight, with a state-of-the-art lighting system illuminating the night sky, there is a holiday feel to Daytona International Speedway as we are just 12 minutes away from the green flag. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the World Center of Racing. Eli Gold, Dick Bergren, and Buddy Baker. You know, ever since this race was postponed back in July, everybody's been looking to this stretch of the schedule. Unprecedented two restrictor plate races back to back. Last week, lap 137, a major accident at Talladega. Some teams have been able to rebuild their cars. Others have junked them. They're starting over. You know the story of Ernie Irvin. He hasn't been in the car much, but he's here ready to go racing tonight with Ricky Craven having done all the work this weekend. Last weekend, the Thunderbirds were a story. There were five of them. Two finished in the top ten. Four T-Birds going racing tonight. And everybody's run here at Daytona. Experience isn't a problem, but it is something new under the lights and the shadows and all of the glare that maybe or maybe not could be a storyline as this evening continues. And Buddy Baker, that's where you come in. 19 top fives here. You've won a couple of races here. Is everybody starting at square one again, or does experience matter? I think experience matters when you go to Daytona or Talladega. You have to know how to drive. But one thing to keep in mind, there are so many questions that hadn't been answered. Nobody's actually run 400 miles under the lights here. They're going to have little things that happen in this race that they've never experienced. It is, though, an electric atmosphere. Have you ever experienced anything like it, Dick Bergman? Nothing like this, and this is restrictor plate racing, and you talk about some drama. Listen to this. Last year, there were four restrictor plate races, four different winners. This year, so far, three restrictor plate races, three different winners. How about upsets? In the last four years here in this event, there have been two first-time winners. But one man who has been a winner here at Daytona for years is the Reverend Hal Marchman. He is the chaplain for Daytona International Speedway. He is now set to offer this evening's invocation. Please rise for our invocation and the singing of our national anthem by Sandy Patty. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father of all mankind, we thank you for these wonderful lights, and we remember the good word saying, I am the light of the world, and he that walketh in light shall never walk in darkness. We give thanks for this wonderful promise, for this beautiful track, for the best fans in the world and the best cars in the world and the best crews in the world. Shalom and amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting. that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the America's favorite inspirational artist, Miss Sandy Patty. And as you see the fireworks going off here at Daytona, an interesting factor in the garage. So many of the teams have gone back 
to the Daytona 500 setups because the temperature outside right now, fellas, probably within seven or eight degrees of what we normally experience here during many of the February runnings, not at all like a July Pepsi 400. Eli, you're exactly right. And I talked to Larry McReynolds. He said, I want to tell you, Mike Skinner is starting with exactly the same thing that the car in the museum over here has from Dale Earnhardt when he won the 500. Of course, the car in the museum, we're speaking of Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction right next door, which always puts on display the winning car from each year's Daytona 500. Guys, just look at that. What a view. Collectively in this booth, we've probably got far more visits to Daytona than any of us would like to admit. We all had darker hair or hair <laughs> <laughs> when we first came here. Oh, you got it. This is just a spectacular evening. Don't it do I mean, if, if ever I was going to run another competitive lap, it would want to be right here. I've never made a competitive lap around this racetrack at night. I would love to try it one time. I was just thinking that if Big Bill Sr. is really up there looking down, he'll have no problem finding his racetrack this evening. He built this place, opened it first in 1959, and would he not be proud to see this event being staged this evening? Needless to say, not a seat to be had, long since sold out. Heck, here on Bud Pole qualifying the other day, we had a crowd larger than many Daytona 500s of not that many years ago. The engines have fired. We are set to go racing and so honored to be with you on TNN Motorsports for Daytona at the speed of light. They light it up as they go green in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for this 40th renewal of the Pepsi 400. On the Bud Pole, Bobby Labonte has won three of four restrictor plate poles here in 1998. Jeff Burton, his best restrictor plate finish, is fifth in the 98 Daytona 500. Dale Jarrett and Terry Labonte sharing role number two, a couple of big track veterans. Of course, Dale Earnhardt, who won here in February. And Mark Martin with seven wins in 1998. Rusty Wallace was quickest, actually second fastest in happy hour here yesterday. And Jeff Gordon with two Daytona wins, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series point leader. Mike Skinner led the most laps at Talladega a weekend ago. And the first start for Hutch Strickland driving the second car for Andy Petrie Racing. The leading rookie of this year is Kenny Irwin. And Ward Burton is alongside in row number six. A former winner here, the 1990 Daytona 500 winner Derek Cope and John Andretti, who won this race a year ago. Steve Park and Ken Schrader share row number eight. Kenny Schrader, he was on the Bud Pole just one weekend ago at Talladega. Look at those flash bulbs just illuminating further this Daytona International Speedway. Sterling Marlin, and give a call to Billy Standridge, guys. He comes to the big tracks, not a full-time runner. He's always in the field. You're exactly right, and he's doing a Thunderbird, and the rules are really not that good for the Thunderbird. Billy's doing a great job. Dan Pardis on the right of your screen, a local Daytona favorite in his first NASCAR Winston Cup race. He comes from the ARCA Bondo Marhide series. Joe Nemechek and Kenny Wallace sharing the 27th and 28th starting positions. Michael Waltrip and Dave Marcus, who a week ago had his best finish since Bristol in 1994. He had a Childress engine then. He has a Childress engine now. He could be very strong tonight. There you see Jerry Nadeau and Ted Musgrave, 33rd and 34th starters. Wally Dallenbach, he was fast last night in practice, and Rich Bickle, and he was restrictor plate race. He's missed the other ones this year. There's Jimmy Spencer's T-Bird. Doesn't qualify well, but he might be coming to the front, so he says, good to see Ernie Irvin. And Johnny Benson had a little problem here last night in happy hour. The hood blew off that thing in happy hour, damaged the back end of that car. They worked on it, fixed the roof, put a new hood on it, and got him back out in time for happy hour to finish. And there you see the 43rd starter, Darrell Waltrip, Franklin, Tennessee, as this field gets set to go green. The first time ever under the lights. The Pepsi 400 for the first time ever on TNN. It is just an amazing view from any angle. You know how dedicated the fellows were from Musco Lighting to get this project right? They went through the Richard Petty Driving School to better understand the lights that are required 
for super speedway racing. That's what you call dedication. Now let's take a look and see what it looks like from the driver's point of view. Wally Dallenbeck. Few shadows coming off the wall. What kind of feedback are you hearing about that, buddy? And you've driven out here. Well, you know, we're, we're talking about those shadows off the cars, as you see yeah, against the wall the there. Sure right down on there. the outside of the wall sure there, there's a little the shadow there, but nothing I like the daytime when you're squinting with the sun in your face going into turn one. I think the visibility is much better tonight than it is any time during the daytime. That's what everybody is saying. You know, it's amazing how well you can see. Look how bright it is from Steve Park's ride. Yeah, looking up at Derek Cook's car there. Let's see, 180 on the water temperature. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Gordon climbing the banking here at Daytona International Speedway. All he's got to do is finish 16th or better in the remaining races. And the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship is his. From just down the street a piece, Mark Martin lives here in Daytona Beach, as so many of you know. He's tried his hardest this year to hang right there with Jeff Gordon. It's been so tough. And there you see Bobby Labonte, our bud pole sitter, getting set to take the green in this very first race. Such a historic occasion. And you know, NASCAR racing has had so many historical happenings over the last number of years, whether it's new racetracks, new faces, new events. But this really, I think, takes the cake. Well, everybody's been waiting for this thing for really all year long, and people have been very patient with what happened here on the 4th of July weekend, and the flash bulbs are going as the cars go by the grandstand, and everybody's ready for this thing to happen. Big night. Those who didn't qualify for this event, Gary Bradbury, Rick Mast, Robert Presley, tough break for Dick Trickle. After the problems of a week ago, they brought a Thunderbird here, but it couldn't qualify, and Rick Wilson. But you know, you look back, Names like Fireball Roberts, A.J. Foyt, they have won here. Donnie Allison, Bobby Isaac, Sam McQuag, Neil Bonnet, Leroy Yarbrough, Davey Allison. This racetrack just chock full of history. But to win that first Daytona under the lights will put you right there at that top of the list. Eli, one thing, you can travel anywhere in the world and they'll ask you, first question, you say a Winston Cup race, they say if you won it, they okay, told Strap in, folks. Glad you're with us on TNN Motorsports. Enjoy the evening. Here we go. Scramble up front. Here goes Jarrett, the winner last week at Talladega with traffic help from Earnhardt. He'll swing to the inside of Bobby Labonte in turn three. Jeff Burton had a miserable start there. Jarrett brings him off turn four and they head down the front straightaway. He's making his presence known right now. Leading is the best place on Super Super Speedway. 13th top five start of the year for Dale Jarrett as you ride with Steve Park. in the high line just dropping back Jeff Gordon riding in 12 <laughs> here goes <laughs> Earnhardt here to the front the winner of the Daytona 500 back in February he takes the lead and Bobby Labonte drops in the second there with Rusty Wallace just behind him as they head off turn two and typically that big tracks Jared has to work to try and get back in line and still hasn't Bill Jarrett got hung out to dry you can see he's drifted back to about seventh place now on the outside well, this is Earnhardt's 41st Daytona start this is the 34th time he has led he has led almost every race he has ever run here he is the winningest driver at this racetrack took that title over 
from the great road racer Hurley Haywood a few years ago. When you count the Bush Series races, the IROC races, the Gatorade 125s, no one has been more successful here than Dale Earnhardt. Patience the thing right now. You know the guys back here that are running side by side. Jeff Gordon would love to be up there where they're running nose to tail right now and not have to contend with the car directly on the right side of him. That double file running starts in ninth. Park in the one. Jarrett the 88, the 24 of Gordon. That's ninth Hello, on back. I'm hearing there was no problem with Jeff Burton's car. It just took him a while to get going. Here comes Bobby Labonte on the outside making a move on Earnhardt. Rusty's trying to figure who he wants to run with right now. He drops down with the three car there. Dale Earnhardt as they go down the back straight away. Mike Skinner makes it three, four, five cars down in the corner. Three wide behind them. All of this on lap number four. When it sorts out, Earnhardt still has the lead and there goes Labonte lucky to get back in line in fifth. So spread out back there, dust got kicked up from underneath Gordon's rear tires. Right with Jeff Gordon into the trioval there. You can see he's now nose to tail there. Nobody on the outside. That's the way to get around this place. Back here, that's traffic jams. But Burton's still on that high side, still going nowhere with it. And look at the 30 of Derek Cope. He has broken away from the two by two and has caught this front single file trap. Cope could be a threat tonight. He really could. Now, he has run incredibly well. He's finished on the lead lap twice this year. It's the last two races. They have gotten their act together in a hurry. See these guys running. Look at Cope on the outside. It's That's showing power there. He's moving up on Jeff Gordon as he come off turn four. <laughs> Hope riding just ahead. He's in seventh. That's that black number 30. Then Gordon and Steve Park and Jarrett. From Mark Martin looking backwards towards Sterling Marlin. A brand new car after the problems of a weekend ago, and he's still in the middle of the pack, guys. And that 55 car, Hutt Strickland making his presence known there as he's moving up in the 55 car. That's incredible, Hutt Strickland doing such a job here. An essentially brand new team running as well as he is this early on. 22, Ward Burton. That team gets the sponsorship from Caterpillar next year. MBNA moves on to Joe Gibbs Racing for Bush Series cars and for Corey McClendon's NHRA machine. Six laps complete. Eli, it looks like the outside group is starting in. to work. These guys are starting to move around back there. One well, single foul. Now you see the 28 car, Kenny Owen Jr., kind of caught out on the inside as Gordon and all the guys are moving to the outside. Steve Park's trying to get by him on the outside. Oh, what an awesome shot that is. You think this place isn't lit up perfectly? Yeah. Bobby Labonte has now moved his way into third place. Mike Skinner has nobody there to help him. Here comes Cope on the outside, Eli. Derek Cope trying to make a bid for fifth. Gordon wondering which way to go. Looks like they're going to leave Skinner by his lonesome down low. Boy, he's got a lot of horsepower in that race car, though. He's holding his own with Bobby Labonte, and you see he has nobody directly behind him to help him draft. Skinner went to school last week at Talladega. He led the most laps and wound up seventh when it was all done and over with. Got shuffled back by some of his friends, and he says he has a few debts <laughs> to repay this evening. Boy, Gordon's caught on the outside in the 24 there. He's dropping back some. Field now working back towards the start-finish line. Meanwhile, Wally Dallenbach has problems. Flat. Wally Dallenbach with that flat left front. So Wally makes what has to be one of the longest rides in motorsports. And the one thing he has to worry about is that tire coming apart and knocking the inner panels out of the car. We are nine laps in to the Pepsi 400. Daytona at the speed of light is live on TNN. Welcome back, everybody, live at the World Center of Racing. 
Dale Earnhardt continues to lead. The battle you're watching there is fourth and fifth spot. You see Wally Dallin back. He has gotten a new good years on, but he is going a lap down, as you see right there. Derek Cope is driving a very aggressive race. He is not leaving much room between himself and some of those other cars. So far, so good. Eli, we have to mention this. There is a threat of rain around the speedway here. You see these guys right now, though, they're going at it. They could care less at the moment about anything except trying to get that great track position. You see the two car there, Rusty Wallace trying the inside and outside. Nobody went with him. He jumped right back in behind Earnhardt. Nose to tail again. Let's check in on Pit Road now and get an update on some other stories developing. Well, guys, I'll tell you what, Bobby Labonte's doing a great job right now staying up in the top four for one simple reason. He can't hear on his radio. There's a lot of bleed over coming. You'll never guess the reason what they figured out was causing it. Bobby's son, Tyler, picked up one of the team radios and was playing with it, talking into it. We got Dawson coming out. And Dawson is coming out for some rain showers. Very, very light, but rain showers nevertheless, and it's something you don't mess with at 200 miles an hour. So, caution on the speedway for the first time. It'll be coming out here at lap number 13 of the Pepsi 400. Well, one thing's for sure, we've had a very light appetizer right here of racing, and it's spectacular. Sure is. We had rain here last night as well during right. the happy hour session. Uh, delayed it for well over an hour. It was amazing the number of fans who sat in here with, uh, I guess what you would call high fashion at Daytona for the showers. Garbage bags that stretched to the ankles were in vogue <laughs> last evening. Uh, the rain stopped. They got the 15 minutes of the half hour they hoped that they were going to get of that, and it just poured again. But tonight we're not supposed to have any big rain. Just a little shower, maybe. So caution on the speedway here at the World Center of Racing. TNN Motorsports live coverage of Daytona at the speed of light. The Pepsi 400 continues in a moment. Let's go back to 1983. Terry Labonte had the 1983 Firecracker 400 in his sights. When with two laps to go, his hopes fizzled out of gas. Labonte would drift back to fifth, and Buddy Baker would coast to victory after running out of gas as well on the final lap. It would prove to be Buddy Baker's final Winston Cup victory, and look how well he handles the champagne, <laughs> folks. It won't do anything. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Run yeah. down a champagne 101, did you? What do you expect on my last super speedway win? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go downstairs. There's been a driver change. Mike Hogwood has the story, Mike. Ricky Craven now in the 36 machine. Ernie Irvin has climbed out. Uh, Ernie, first of all, uh, how are you feeling? I mean, I'm feeling all right. You know, um, you know, it's a, it's a shame to have to to get out, but you know, we uh, we're running back in the back right there. Um, you know, hopefully Ricky can uh, take it to the front. What can you tell us about this racetrack, Daytona, under the lights? Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, right now it's a uh, it's it's lit up really good. Um, there's there's no problem with under the lights, but. Uh, you know, nobody has any experience it. So, um, you know, right now we just have to play it by ear. Ernie Irvin out for the night. Good to see Ernie here, though, and he'll look ahead to Phoenix and to Rockingham. Both races you'll be seeing right here on TNN Motorsports. You see Darrell Waltrip in in the Tabasco car. Eli, several of the cars back in the field come back in, took on extra fuel, got new tires. They're going out there and try to make this a two pit stop race. Jimmy Spencer, we talked about him in the opening. There is that uh, no bull Thunderbird. He started near the back. He's up to 25th position right now. Another guy we need to talk about also. Let's not leave Ken Schrader out of the equation because Schrader, who was last weekend's Bud Pole winner, is also working his way to the front. He is now 10th in that line of traffic that you see on the screen. He's moved up from his 16th starting spot. There's the man of the hour from lap two to this moment. And this caution flag now set to wrap up just the lightest of rain shower that quickly passed across the Daytona International Speedway. Running behind Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace. Hard to imagine considering Rusty Wallace an underdog, but here we really do. In 30 starts here at Daytona, he's got a grand total of one top five. In 30 starts at Talladega, the other restrictor play track, one top five. Rodney Wise with the green flag. Oh, 
somebody's really on the move at the bottom. That's Wally Dallin back trying to use whatever he can after making his pitch stop. Weaving his way through traffic. There's Wally giving us the bird's eye view. What he did, he anticipated the start there and got him a great run. And when you get by the flag, you can do what you please. Of course, he is two laps down right now, Dallin back is, after the tire problem that brought him to pit road at lap nine. And Mike, it's tough when you got to make a pit stop that early in the day because Dallin back now further drifting back as they scramble all around him on the racetrack. Tony Furr, the crew chief for the uh, 50 team, we're just getting some information on it, fell off the pit wall when Wally Dallenbach came up pit road. They think he has a broken leg. They have taken him to the infield care center. Rand Dorton will be in charge here in the 50 pits for the rest of the night. Oh, brother. Of course, Tony was the winning crew chief here a year ago for John Andretti when he picked up the win in the Pepsi 400 for Cale Yarborough Motorsports. But again, Dobbin back a couple of laps down as we zero in on the scramble. Again, Cope in the 30. See if he can hang in there with Park's drafting help in the one. Well, you can see uh, Cope move to the inside. Here's Steve Park pulling up, trying to get in the draft there. But when he dropped way to the inside there, you see Jeff Gordon got a little bit of a run on him as they started off to turn four there. Cope, <laughs> woo, he got loose coming Outside. off turn four. Outside. Park qualified with a Richard Childress engine. They had one available for this race this evening, but chose to go with their own, and they have had engine trouble the last three races in a row, but I guess they've decided it's all squared away now. They got their own stuff under their own hood. There you see the spread from the first pack back to the second. It is just a tick under one second. Eli, they need to get single file and run that front bunch down. If they build up a big edge here, this could really hurt these guys as far as track position as they run side by side. It slows them down. And for the folks who are new to the sport, buddy, we should mention that there is a distinct difference between what we saw at Talladega and what you see at Daytona. The tracks, yes, they look alike, but they're not. One is narrower here. Handling is a difference. And you will see more packs of traffic here, won't you? Exactly. Uh, 33 degree backing in Talladega, 31 degrees here. Just a little less backing, a little narrower here. And it comes uh, to a point, in, and when you start wearing the tires down, that you actually need handling here, where Talladega, you just run it wide open all day long. Here, you have to really put yourself in great position getting in the corner. And that was one of the great questions in the garage this morning. Do you go for handling, try to make the car easier to drive, or do you make the car squat down more no on the race now, track? No help. It's faster when it squats down, but it's harder to hang on to, and the majority of crew chiefs I spoke with this morning said outside, they are going for there. handling. And you heard Park get the worst news he can get on a big track. No help. Ball right up outside, man. We're hung a little bit right here. And you can Hold see Dale Hold Jarrett going by. He looked like he's running 15 miles an hour faster as he starts to go by there. No help on this racetrack means steady movement to the rear. But it doesn't mean the end of the day. Remember last week, Bobby Hamilton started 37th, got up to 5th. Then he went from 41st to 5th later in the day. So. You just have to be patient. Well, Steve Park, you know, is starting out. He's getting a lot of experience on his major speedways, but right now he's hung out by himself. Everybody else is single file now, and they're really getting to go. There's your top five. Sixth is Jeff Gordon. Steve Burns is in his pit. Okay, Eli, and even though he's sixth, he's very happy with his race car just before the last car, or the first caution, rather. He told Ray Evernham this car is running great, and I really love to run it on the bottom. And also, Dick, to follow up on your point about handling, this track has a, is more critical on handling than Talladega. One of the crew chiefs told me they just don't get quite the same grip on this racetrack as they do at Talladega. There's Billy Standridge, one of the Ford Thunderbirds in the field, having problems off the pace, as you can clearly see in turn three. A couple of laps ago, you'll see what happened to Billy Standridge. Watch that. Dan oh. Parnas there in the 07 about got him. Parnas did a good job. So Billy Standridge in for an unscheduled stop here on lap number 20. Dale Earnhardt continues to lead. 
but we are still early, just 21 laps complete. There you see Steve Park as we welcome you back live to Daytona, now in 32nd, and about to go to 33rd, and potentially 34th, but yes, as always, there is a reason why. Watch this turn four a few laps ago. Steve Park on the bottom side, Mark Martin on the outside. Watch the back end of the car as it gets loose. The luckiest man in Florida to continue and not wreck that race car. The back end is way out there. And now back live with Steve Park. He's in 32nd. You see just to your left there, the nose of Ricky Rudd's tide ride. And there is Ricky out set to go by. Johnny Benson will go by. Rich Bickle running there as well. And remember before the spotter said, Steve, no help. Hasn't gotten any better. Still no help drafting wise, and they'll finally, finally get back in line. That'll take a little bit of work on the chassis when he makes his first pit stop. I imagine right now he's just real happy he's still in the race, and they can adjust on this car. It's not all crumpled up. There's Ricky Rudd, started 41st, now running as you see in 33rd. Johnny Benson right behind him has those Betty Crocker colors on the car. They were to have run those sponsorship colors here in July. And in this instance, it carried over. Of course, a lot of the teams didn't have that luxury. A lot of the teams had special sponsorships tied to things that were happening in midsummer. Baseball teams and so on and so forth. And those sponsor packages uh, just have to be put uh, to the side. This so much looks like a daylight race until you look over the top of the wall and you see, in fact, it is night. This thing is so beautifully lit. The top 12 have now broken away from the rest of the field. Yeah, but it's going to double up here. As you see, Gordon looking to the outside as they come off turn four. They're not really happy. They want to get up there, get those five bonus points. Right now, I'm sure Jeff Gordon would love to lead a lap if he could possibly get up there. But right now, he's... We really don't have that much help. You see Bobby, Bobby Levani or is that the, uh, that's Derek That'll be Cope. Derek Cope right yeah, behind Derek him. Derek Cope right behind him. Right now they're running side by side and the leaders are moving away. The front 12 though, even with this double file running, are still four and a half seconds ahead of 13th place Jeff Burton and the rest of those cars behind him. Hey, there's Schrader in the 33. And he's up to seventh as you ride with Jeff Gordon now in fifth. Fourth here in the Daytona 500 in February. Boy, look, you, look at Jeff Gordon. Everybody thinks it's a ride in the park. He's working that steering wheel. He knows that draft is so very important to stay in. But he's up on that steering wheel. Through the trial, watch his hand movement here. Back and forth, trying to walk that tight wire as he goes through the dog leg there. Penny Irwin in third spot, doing a great job. Super run for him. Of course, last weekend, the day ended early with engine problems. And he's very much in it. Now watch this. Four seconds until that group of cars right there. Well, they've peeled back. And look who's leading that next pack. Talked about the old T-Bird and Jimmy Spencer. Look at, Rick, look at Ricky Craven in the 36, running right with Mark Martin. I'm sure Ricky Craven realizes this may have a lot to do with what he does in Western Cup racing later on. He's going to give her a hard drive. And with the driver change replacing Ernie Irvin, they did not lose a lap. So Ricky's very much on the lead lap in 15. Let's check back in with Glenn Jarrett. Hey, guys, when uh, Steve Park had his trouble, I had a feeling there might be a reason for him getting so loose on the racetrack. I came down and talked to Felipe Lopez, the crew chief. He is big time loose. He cannot stay in the accelerator. The back end wants to come around. They're talking about making an air pressure adjustment, uh, adjustment, some wedge, anything they can do to try to tighten the car up. They're just asking him to hang on right now. That's a handful at this place. Yeah, no fun trying to hang <laughs> on at 190 miles an hour the at Daytona seat. with all these cars First riding around. Of course. Out of the back Oh, loose uh, that by is, himself. That's really yeah. bad. And his last lap was down to 183 miles an hour compared to Earnhardt and those in the lead draft running 188. So a five-mile-an-hour difference, uh, you'll find yourself falling way behind and getting lapped before you know it. Well, but, you know, you wonder about courage. Remember, this guy got hurt at Atlanta this year. He was also hurt at Homestead. He's hanging right in there despite all that. 30 of 160 laps are complete here at Daytona. Dale Earnhardt took the lead at lap number two after Jarrett led the first lap. You 
see fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh on your screen. Derek Pope in that third, just giving it a heck of a ride. And his head is on the bottom side of the racetrack and up on top side there. You can see them all trying to get by Pope on the outside as Dale Jarrett pulls even with him down through the crowd. Talking to Doug Hewitt, the crew chief on that uh, Derek Pope car, as you know. We've gone through like 17 wrecks already this year. It has just been a, a remarkable number. Well, they've also been through some tough times of just not being fast and just not being competitive, but they have worked incredibly hard over the last month or so, been to the wind tunnel, done a lot of work with engines, and it is paying off well. 43 started. 42 oh. runs. We have problems on the back straight away. Down the back stretch. Three. Down the back stretch here. Back it up, boys. Johnny Benson in the 26. Yeah. 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 in the 55. Bickle in the 98. Green in the 46. Caution. Second time. That is Kevin LePage in the Prime Star machine. He's coming out. Little so fire. You see Kevin moving. Falling on the ground to be sure all the fires not on him. And caution. A multi-car accident. Chuck Green. 98 Bickle. Green. Huck Strickland. Johnny Benson was involved. Clearly we saw the page. Here comes Ted Musgrave. Tremendous amount of damage to all these cars. Look at the right front corner of Musgrave's car as he slides into the pits. It looks like that radiator's losing some water, too. Jeff Bodine. Oh. He is not, of course, as a former Daytona 500 winner, not had good news of late, knows now that he won't be in that car next year. Michael Waltrip will be. And he's really got no ride lined up to no. replace this one, either. Michael oh. Waltrip. There's Michael. A lot of damage to the Wood Brothers car. Wood Brothers winning his car owners here at Daytona. They thought they were going to have a great night tonight. Jeff Green, a tremendous amount of damage to the left front corner of his car. Rich Bickle in. And again, there's the Hutt Strickland car. You see the net is down and he's moving around. Look at that tire. That come off the right rear of Michael Waltrip's car. What do you fix there? Everything's torn up so badly. They'll just have to make pieces to make that thing. It's wrapped around the rear end house, and you see them snatching on that rubber there, trying to get it off. Oh, dragging pieces and parts. Yeah. Meanwhile, all the leaders will come in for pit stops. Lap number 33 will be pit stops for all the leaders. First to Glenn Jarrett. And Rusty Wallace brings his car in. Guys, he has done a great job so far. Been glued right to Dale Earnhardt's bumper since the race began, running in second place. He reports the car is just a little bit loose. So in this four-tire change, you're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Try to tighten him up just a little bit. Here's Mike. Dale Earnhardt has said virtually nothing during the first part of this race. Four tires and fuel. That's it for the leader, Dale Earnhardt. All of these stops under caution, lap 33. It looked like Rusty Wallace may have won the war on pit stops there. He leads Dale Earnhardt off pit road. That's the same car Rusty Wallace had last week at Talladega. They repaired it, and it is running with the lead right now under caution here at Daytona. Glenn, good work by that Robin Pemberton crew. Boy, and just as you said that, Eli, Robin looked at me and had a big smile and winked at me. I mean, they beat Dale Earnhardt out by maybe two and a half, three seconds. That might have been one of the best pit stops I've ever seen these guys do, and they have done some great ones. Came at a great time, got Rusty out in the lead. Tell you, he's got a fast race car. When we come back to the World Center of Racing, we'll take a look at all that's gone on. Michael Waltrip's going to have to come back in again. You saw the big 21 up on the black flag board. Now there is what remains of the Prime Star machine, the Ford Taurus of Kevin LePage.
Michael Waltrip was on the initial receiving end of the first hit. Let's take you back and show you exactly what happened off the corner moments ago on the back stretch. Let's all get involved. You see Kevin LePage here getting to, into the outside wall. Michael Waltrip gets caught, spins around. Everybody coming goes low. Some of them go high, and you can see Ted Musgraves there getting involved. Jeremy Mayfield just made it through. So did the four of Bobby Hamilton. Low was the way to get out of that, but there's no way to tell ahead of time. It is so hard to see when these big wrecks get going. Another Looking view. From turn three back towards turn two. And you can see visibility is down. You cannot see a thing when you go through yeah. with all the tire smoke and, and the car spinning round and round. How would you know where to go? Look at Bill Elliott back there. You saw the golden arches. He just wowed it on down. Experience will do that for you. Picked yeah. the right lane, went down low, and just took it easy and managed to get through there without a nick on his race car. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. But again, Kevin LePage's car you saw alone on the low side of the racetrack break loose with Michael Waltrip, and uh, the wreck was on. Jeff Bodine there in the seven. He really tried to go low, and that got him involved. So there wasn't yeah. any Look set at Dallenbach. pattern. Look at Dallenbach. just got through that mess, too. I wonder... I don't know how he saw his way through. Well, let's take a look. Let's see. We're riding look, with him. Yeah. the camera. This is what you can see in a major speedway wreck. Nothing. You see right there. What would you do? Listen. He hit it. Just barely touched the outside wall, and he was lucky nobody was there. Oh, look at what's left of LePage's car. Again, this is a replay of earlier. Kevin LePage after the accident. to the infield care center where we'll have an update for you shortly under caution for the second time tonight the first caution was at lap 13 for a little rain shower now a multi-car accident at lap 32 we are back with you here at the world center of racing under caution the pepsi 400 under the lights for the first time ever and for the first time ever live right here on tnn motorsports the race leader rusty wallace rusty wallace has led only 96 laps in 43 restrictor plate races coming into this evening's event <laughs> has been an empty plate hasn't it mm. Meanwhile, down on the pit lane, Steve Burns checking on some other good runners. Steve? Hey, Eli, Kenny Irwin has a very fast race car, but they had a little bit of a problem on the last pit stop. They wanted to make some adjustments. Look at here, they taped every one of their pit stops, and the crew was just over here moments ago seeing where they had a little bit of a problem. They did make some air, uh, air adjustments on the tires, took some tape off the front grille. So again, Kenny Irwin is very happy with this race car. In fact, Eli, they've been trying to keep him calm down. Kenny Irwin running seventh right now. Still learning how to communicate with the crew and tell them what that car really needs. Jeff Bodine, he's down near the care center with Mike Hogwood. Jeff, first of all, you okay? And what happened? I'm fine. Uh, Kevin said he just lost a car, got sideways off too, and uh, we all started running into each other. If Goodyear could make a tire that didn't smoke, we could see where the wrecks were. Might be able to miss him, but I just <laughs> couldn't see where anybody was. My spotters tried to help me, but... Uh, the Phillips car uh, tried to make a hole through there, but we hit somebody and put us out. Tough break for you as you wind down with this team. Well, we had a great car tonight. It was handling great, and we're just uh, trying to get through that pack, and unfortunately, we didn't make it. But what a night here at Daytona. History's being made. Wish I was out there. And uh, Jeff, Jeff Bodine will not be part of it the rest of the night. Tough break for Jeff in his 501st career start. You know, a lot of the drivers talk about the big one, referring to the multi-car crashes at Talladega and here at Daytona. Over the weekend, we've been asking a few of the drivers their thoughts about how do you avoid the big one. Nothing you do about it. You're just out there riding. You know, I mean, you're, you're cruising along. You could be leading. You're cruising along. You'd be running dead last, and you could be involved in something. And so it's kind of... I mean, it's, it kind of happens enough, or happens, it happens uh, where to the point I think you just understand it. You know, I think you know, it's like, well, here it is, or there it is. You know, you're always uh, in a avoidance mode uh, or a survival mode, even if you're already 
uh, you know, already had some kind of impact. Uh, you're still trying to drive the car. You're still trying to slide it into control, you know, from out of control into control. Nine times out of ten, everything is fine, but it's that one time when, you know, a little something happens, just a misjudgment of the apron or of where another car is, and all of a sudden you're in it. It's about that time, you know, you're just, you're just thinking, man, I hope I get through this. And if you don't get through it, you just hold on tight, and it seems like it takes forever. Well, he manages to get on through it and held on tight. Jeff Gordon currently running in fifth. Rusty Wallace is the leader. Bobby Labonte is second. Dale Earnhardt third. Dale Jarrett fourth. Gordon is fifth. Skinner is sixth. Irwin is seventh. Then Schrader, okay, Terry Labonte, and Mark Martin. Go, go, go. Green flag. Saw Wally Dallin back in the 50 there. He's trying to get back one of the two laps that he lost earlier. Boy, I tell you, his, his chances are slim and none right now. You see everybody up there behind the two car. Rusty Wallace knows the tail down the back straight away. He's only going to drop back. Dale Jarrett there in the number 88 in fourth spot. That's not just the car that won the million dollars last week. Believe it or not, it's the same engine. They took it all apart, put some new pieces in it, put the rest of it all back together. Same car, same motor. A lot of fellas, though, had to go with brand new equipment like Earnhardt, like Mark Martin. They just couldn't resurrect the machine of a weekend ago. Yeah, you know, Jeff Gordon right now is just running just about a perfect race. You see him behind Dale Jarrett right there, two of the fastest cars, and Earnhardt just in front of them. Those three cars right now, they're just riding along. They're not worried about it because they know they have great race cars on this racetrack. Bobby Labonte in a second is going to look around, and I'm afraid the rest of may be in trouble. 58 races now in a row that Rusty Wallace has not posted a victory. Dale Earnhardt there in the three. You saw him with one win in 88 starts now. Look at that pack of traffic. I was watching J Jerry Nadeau in that green car up there. He was completely sideways on the high side. Never cracked it. Never backed up. Just went right on by a car sideways. Still in the early stages of the Pepsi 400. Rusty Wallace shows the way. And a long night's work yet to go. Welcome back, everybody, live on TNN Motorsports. The 40th renewal of the Pepsi 400, and Dale Earnhardt's going to make the outside work if he can. And he can. Dale Earnhardt takes the lead in the Pepsi 400. Jared and Gordon may start shuffling Wallace the other way. Yeah, they're, they're on the outside there, nose to tail, and Earnhardt, he's caught to the inside there. He's riding with Gordon as they head through the, look at the tack there, 6,800. I could read it very well. <laughs> they don't turn nearly the RPMs here in the restrictor plate races. That's part of what the restrictor plate does. You just don't crank them up to 9,000 RPM. Oh, it's Gordon working that wheel. He is, but look what he's under here. He and Earnhardt side by side. First to all of that, Jarrett sneaks out ahead of the pack. So Jarrett just out of the screen is the race leader. This is for second. Teammates on the high, high side of the racetrack, the three there, there, there Earnhardt, and you see Mike Skinner moving his way in there. They can hook up and really make it tough on these guys trying to lead. Looks like they're running the pace lap. Yeah, at 190 miles an hour. Kenny Irwin in the 28 car was very concerned that no one would run with him because he is a rookie, and he's afraid that some of these guys just don't have the confidence to run with him. But so far, so good. He is still right up in the front group. You, you, you see Craven? I did. did you, you see, see the Craven 36? now all the way up to eighth place. He is really flying in the 36 car. If you're just joining us, Ernie Irvin started the car. Ricky Craven took over at a very early pit stop at lap 14. He's a good kid, too. Just want to see him do well. He's a great kid. He really is, and he deserves a top ride in Winston Cup, and he's hoping to get one for next year. So far, he doesn't have anything. Let's compare Mark Martin's hands now to what we saw earlier from Jeff Gordon, for instance. You'll have to drop all the way on the left side. He, when Mark Martin first 
started racing, he was a very small boy before he started lifting, lifting weights, and he got where he would put both hands on the left side of the steering wheel through the corner so he could hold the car, and he never changed his driving style. You know what? It works. It sure does. It sure does. Let's see if Gordon can make it work with Irwin. Jarrett. I hope it's not as frightening inside those cars as it is to watch it appear with these speeds running that close together. Let me tell you, that's happened right there for a real race car driver to get out there and run like they're running right now. There's no fear in that group right there. All they don't want to do is make a mistake. Michael Waltrip is back on the racetrack. He is 15 laps down after the accident of earlier. There are those two T-Birds there, Spencer and Little. You know, I listened to the motor. You could purring. hear them purring down through there, but never lifting in the corners, running wide open all the way around the racetrack. Stricter played races, he'd be a whole lot better off this year. He's really had a tough time starting at Daytona where the rear end failed. He wound up 38. He was 23rd at the first Talladega, and of course, the big wreck last week, he was 34th. He doesn't like restrictor plate racing at the moment. His finishes cost him 246 points versus what Jeff Gordon picked up at those exact same races. And when you come down to this time of the season, it really stands out. Eli steady mover right now. Kenny Schrader just behind our leaders here. You see him there in the green, number 33, moving up. There's Schrader. There comes Mark Martin in ninth. The 40 is Sterling Marlin. Never count him out of the big tracks as we ride with Mark Martin. Kenny Schrader there, as I was talking about, on the outside in the stall car as they come down the front straightaway side by side. Now the first three have kind of distanced himself from the... the Guys that are running side by side. Remember, folks, back in February when Schrader finished fourth in the Daytona 500, he had that fractured sternum. Remember all that mess? He got involved in the accident with the Gatorade 125s and so on. He said, I'm happy to be here and to be here helping. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he had his neck operated on, on on a Monday and come down here and run a complete 500 here after having surgery. So he's a tough customer. Believe me, he loves to race. And really, the only reason he didn't win in February, if you ask me, is he had no drafting partner when it counted, if you remember back to the finish of the Daytona 500. There you see the front three, having pulled away by six-tenths of a second from fourth place on back. It's getting good at Daytona. Welcome back, everybody. You're looking at the race leader, Dale Jarrett, in a scramble for second place behind him. Earnhardt wants to grab it away from Gordon and from Mike Skinner and from Labonte, but it's going to be a big scramble. What happened to three-car draft, buddy? Is, well, forget about that now. Well, what we have now, we have a two-car breakaway and teammates going at it there. Mike Skinner fighting with Dale Earnhardt down the back straightaway. You can see these guys when they run side by side. Guys out front are going, we're going to do anything but do what they're doing back there because it's slower when two cars run side by side than when you really have a drafting partner out front. Look at the 33. Schrader very much in the mix now. Ricky Craven in for Ernie Irvin, riding with Bobby Labonte in fifth. Look at Earnhardt, how fast he caught those guys after he quit running side by side with the 31 of Mike Skinner. He's right back on Gordon's back bumper. Schrader having a strong run here tonight. Ricky Craven there in that purple car on the outside there, filling in for Ernie Irvin. Great job. I guarantee you people right now are saying, you know, we might ought to talk to him when we're thinking about putting somebody in our car for next year. There you see everybody moving by Michael Waltrip, who is 15 laps down. That first big pack of cars. And Michael's car badly wounded. He'll not be competitive for the rest of the night. Is there anything worse than that, buddy, just riding around? 
nothing in this whole wide world because what you want to do, you want to be up here like these guys that are racing with each other. When you're just riding around, it seems like it's two days long. That was a four second break in the traffic right there. Back to this next group of traffic. John Andretti leading it. That's 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And you drop even further back now to Bill Elliott, six and a half seconds further back behind the race leader. And the next group with Nimichak and Benson and Rudd. That white car in the middle of the picture, that's Brett Bodine. Kyle Petty's in there as we take you back up front. Those are the three big basic packs of traffic. In the garage, Bickle, Musgrave, Green, LePage, Bodine, Strickland, and Standridge. Only Standridge got involved in the accident on lap 32. Some of the numbers in the draft. And Rusty Wallace there running well, working the low side of the racetrack. Got a good car. He, he just got called out a little while ago. See Ricky Craven there coming off the corner on the high side in that purple car. He and Schrader are going at it now. I want to go back to the infield care sec, uh, center a second, guys. And Hog, what's the deal on uh, Kevin LePage? Have you heard anything yet? Yeah, he, uh, he's getting x-rayed right now. He's getting his shoulder x-rayed. They think it might be broken. And he might have broken it when he dove out of that race car. You remember there were some flames inside of there, and Kevin got out in pretty big hurry. Joe will get an update further. That's Mike Hogwood down at the infield care center. We're a lot oh, of shuffling around here. There, though, but how Craven comes out in front of that pack. There's a guy right there you can never count out. In that 40 car, that's Sterling Marlin. Very, very good here at Daytona. All the way back in August at New Hampshire, I was talking with him about the car. He said, don't worry about this. He said, when do we get to those two restrictor plate tracks? That's where I'm really going to run, and that is where he has run best throughout his career. Nine top ten finishes for Sterling Marlin, including three wins and three second place finishes in his last 12 Daytona starts. Fairly impressive numbers right here. But the most impressive numbers are the ones those guys are putting up on the board. They're trying to get gone from everybody else. A lot of souvenirs here. They're coming right back. Welcome back. You think you have a great seat? You see that thing on the bottom of the screen? Ah, oh, that's bad choice as far as I'm concerned. Make up your mind and make it good. <laughs> well, I guess the lizard heard all the seats were sold and he just wanted to get close to the action. Hope he, he got across. also gotten close to the action by logging on to country.com, TNN's home on the World Wide Web. It is your personal source for all things country, from race cars to country stars. Connect to country.com. Look at Ricky Craven in Ernie Irvin's car battling Schrader for fourth with drafting help. Oh, he does, and he's got a fast car with him. Uh, Bobby Labonte's right there, and you can see right now he's cleared Schrader all the way up to fourth. What a great drive. You know, the first time he drove for Hendricks Motorsports down here, they had a one, two, three sweep, and he was right up there. Ricky Craven, very good at Daytona. No, it's a, a magnificent story there for Ricky Craven. Misses about a dozen races this year. Comes back, lasts four more races before uh, they part ways, he and the team. And it's a brand new race car as well. He walked into the garage. He only knew the names of two of his crew members, one of them the crew chief, and he has managed to get this done tonight. What an incredible job by Craven. The other guys he knew as Hey You. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please? And they did. Look, the young man's running up and forth. But you know, one of the things they did that may have proven to be a good move was they didn't much work on qualifying. They instead worked on the race because they figured if Ernie got in the car to go backwards anyway at the start of the thing and working tonight. We're back in 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th on that picture you saw seconds ago. Terry Labonte working his way through traffic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. You know, you see those hand signals right there. That's how you com communicate with people you're trying to work in traffic with. You put your hand up. When you want them to follow in line, you put your hand straight up and say, let's keep it all in line here. We're catching these guys that are racing side by side. That's 12th and 13th. Mark's in 13th. You've got Ward just ahead of him and Sterling Marlin to the left. Never lift. Here's 
face. Derek Cope with problems oh. now. Oh, too bad. Derek Cope running in 19th now. Way off the pace earlier, folks. If you weren't with us, he was mixing it up right outside the top five. Yeah, I was watching that car come through there. He definitely got a problem. He was uh, totally out of the accelerator. If I'm not mistaken, He's, just behind the yeah. left front there, I see a little bit of smoke. Yeah, he might have brushed the wall. Looks like the smoke is going to come off what the right right rear probably from this angle tough to tell but he might have just brushed the wall coming off the corner. He's had a tough time here at Daytona four out of his last five starts have resulted in DNS but he did win here in 1990. And now the guys in the truck have come up with the video. Looking for oh, there he is. Oh, wall. That tells it. Yep. Good work to pick out that shot right there. And Glenn, he tagged the wall coming out of number four, right with the right rear. Yeah, Eli, that's what we're hearing. We've moved down into Derek's pits, and all the guys are standing on the wall waiting him right now. And there's always a bad sign. They got that great big hammer and the softball bat to try to get the uh, get the thing straightened out for him. He still hasn't made it down pit road, but uh, a lot of long faces here because he had a real good race car. So his stop will take place under green while up front you see the front three. Jarrett took the lead at lap 44. We're now at lap 66. Jarrett led lap one. Earnhardt led the next 30. Rusty Wallace led a lap. Marcus led a lap. Wallace led seven. Earnhardt led a lap. And now Jarrett has led from 44 through 66. Hey folks, you can use your internet access to see live in-car camera views from Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and others. Log on to that computer address, tnnracing.com. It's available to you right now. If you're a Ted Musgrave fan, he's back after the accident of earlier. He's 33 laps down, but he's out there nevertheless. And Wally Dallenbach will go a third lap down now, being bypassed by the leaders. Schrader hanging in there in fourth spot. That's the green car. Running a much higher line than anybody else in that front pack. It's almost like his car is pushing a little bit, getting in the corner. You see him moving up the racetrack there. Meanwhile, Kevin LePage has just walked out of the infield care center. Mike, what do you got? Uh, he, he's right here now, and, and we'll try to get a, get a word with him. He's explaining his injury. Yeah, went in turn one. Paul and John Andretti come out of turn two. The car broke loose. Prime start to horse. Uh, you know, I don't know if it was a rookie mistake or somebody took the air off the spoiler. Jack come over and said, maybe there's somebody behind me took the air off the spoiler. But, you know, I just hate it for all the other guys. I hate it for my team. I mean, they worked all all week long to get this car back together after Talladega, and uh, to come here and, and destroy the car, uh, pretty frustrated. Kevin, how's the shoulder? It's a little tender right now. Uh, I definitely won't be playing golf tomorrow, but uh, we'll be ready next week, Phoenix. All right, Kevin LePage. They say he does have a crack in his scapula. He's a tough race driver. He'll be back next week. Uh, it's certainly good to hear that Kevin LePage will be back next week. Very talented young driver from Shelburne, Vermont. Derek Colt has taken the gun out Pontiac behind the wall. Repairs will have to continue there. Rusty Wallace, he has led already here this evening. It is in that six car pack. Those six all on the lead lap. The team has put in an extraordinary effort in their restrictor play program this year. Last winter they tested and tested cut seven different bodies off cars working on things didn't quit there they've been to Talladega with Jeremy Mayfield our broadcast colleague Buddy Baker's been through the window of cars in that team as well. Rusty was here testing several nights in the night. Looks like it's working pretty good huh, buddy. Looks awful good right now but I, you know Dale Jarrett right now he just when he gets out in front. He keeps about the same distance on second place car all the way around the speedway. Nobody seems to be able, even with help, to pull up on him with that at the moment. You know, you think about it, Jarrett has posted seven finishes of eighth or better in his last 12 visits here. That includes a couple of wins. So, like he's up front here and won at Talladega last weekend. Certainly not at all a surprise. 
think we all remember when he won his first time here at Daytona and Ned Jarrett, his father, was able to bring him home on that last lap. One of the most inspiring things I ever watched on TV. One of the best pieces of broadcasting you're ever going to enjoy. And watch this scramble here. That's the third and fourth. Schrader trying to grab it away from Earnhardt. He does it. Got it. it. <laughs> on the outside. Hard way to go. Schrader, 10 top 10s here. Last 12 races. Another fine super speedway racer. He's a fine racer no matter what type of racetrack it is. You know, you think about it, if it's a quarter mile dirt track or a super speedway like this or a half mile paved, doesn't really matter. Schrader's there. But the frustration for Ken Schrader oh. of not having posted an NASCAR Winston Cup win since Dover, Delaware back in June of 1991, it's beyond belief. Eli, you see him fading the high side of the racetrack. What he's getting, though, he's getting a tremendous run down the back straightaway. He's using a little bit wider line. You see Earnhardt, though, he's looking back on the inside. No dice. The 33 is strong, but I tell you what, I don't think he's going to be able to keep running that high line because the guys will get away from him if he keeps doing that. Terry Labonte there, left of your screen. He's running an eighth. Kenny Irwin behind him at ninth. This is a second pack. Running a couple of seconds behind, not quite, almost a couple of seconds behind. Look at this. There's Schrader now yielding to Bobby Labonte to his inside. Yeah, you can only do these things yeah. so many times, and everybody goes to school on where you're running really good. You can see right there, Rusty Wallace running directly behind him. Bobby Labonte down through that back straightaway there. Great car. Able to stay right on the apron. 75 laps on the board of 160. Just joining us, only two cautions. The retirees are Stanbridge, Jeff Bodine, LePage, Strickland, and Bickle. We are back. You watch a great scramble for second place behind the race leader, Dale Jarrett. Coming to the halfway point of the Pepsi 400. Behind the three, last behind the three. Listening to Jarrett's radio. He's also planning what to do with $10,000 on the line for the Gatorade Front Runner Award. He'd like to pick that up as they come to the cross flags. He's looking in the mirror and going, yeah, you guys keep racing side by side. <laughs> Halfway home Halfway with the Pepsi time. 400. Good job. Take care of your fuel. You might be surprised to see Jeff Gordon running as hard as he is and to be running up front this way when he's pretty well got the point thing locked up with 288 ahead. You might think he'd want to be conservative, but he said he has got a good view of the big picture, which is what they told him to do at Talladega last week when the sixth car went out, Mark Martin. But he said, you know, I get out there and the instincts just take over. And nothing like those kind of instincts for Jeff Gordon who tries to pull off yet another NASCAR Winston Cup Series championship. Let's go down to his pit area, Steve. Well, Eli, we were just listening to Ray Evernham talk to Jeff on the radio. And what they're going to do on the next pit stop is remove some tape from the front of the grill. They're a little concerned about the water temperature, but also we can ask Buddy Baker what sort of handling effect that has. They put about four strips of duct tape on the grill. They're going to pull one of them off next stop. Well, what it'll do is, uh, Steve, it'll change the amount of downforce the front end has, of course. But uh, if it's running hot, the benefits of keeping that engine pretty cool will outweigh the amount of downforce you have on the front of the car. Here's a battle for the lead. Still down there. The whole line's down there. Here comes Gordon right along. These guys are working together. You see him getting shuffled back to third place there. He lies. It comes down off turn four. All clear. So all clear as Jarrett gets back in line, manages to get back in line in third. And the fans who salute Dale Earnhardt see him take the lead again at lap number 82. Rich Bickle has gone back to the garage area. Derek Cope is racing again, but he is 13 laps down if you're a fan of his. Here comes Schrader on the outside. <laughs> he, he's, he's persistent, I'll tell you that, as he puts uh, the two car there, Rusty Wallace, in position back. He's persistent too, the fellow in that black number three. 
run he is having tonight at Daytona. Dale Earnhardt, the winner of the Daytona 500, still out there, a great champion, wearing that open-faced helmet of his. We asked him about it this weekend. Why do you still wear that? I'm more comfortable in it. I can feel the air around the car. I can feel when the car's under me, the air changes, you can hear better. Um, I don't know, it's sort of driving by the seat of the pants, kind of kind of old style racing, I reckon, but uh, just what I've really got used to. I've tried the full face helmets, I've tested with them, I've tried to engineer one that I could wear that would be comfortable or give me the vision and give me the, the feel and the sound that I wanted, but uh, just never was comfortable with them, so I never, never have evolved into that. And we talked about it this weekend, buddy. A lot of folks, if you've never driven, you don't quite understand what he's talking about when you can feel that air. It's very simple. You've had the window down when you pass the truck on the interstate. Sure. You can feel the pressure inside the car change as, as you go by the truck. The same thing happens when a car pulls up on the inside. And he has extraordinary peripheral vision as well. He can see cars coming up. And spotters here are a bit of a problem. It's really difficult for the spotters to make the call so that Drivers have a lot more responsibility in that regard. Open face helmet may prove to be an advantage for, for, for uh, Earnhardt tonight. 31 times he's been to victory lane here. Here's a good scramble for 11th now as Sterling Marlin in the 40 tries to grab the spot from Ricky Craven, who's subbing for Ernie Irvin in the 36. There. Well, they make that swap easily enough. Mike Hogwood's been down on the Ernie Irvin, Ricky Craven pit area all night. Brian Pemberton just told me that Ricky Craven says the car can be even better. He thinks it is way too loose. They're going to tighten it up on this pit stop coming up in a couple of laps. Ricky Craven says then he thinks he could go up and contend for this thing. Now we'll find out. Certainly he's running in 12th right now. Everybody pitted at lap number 33. We're now at 85, so closing in on pit stops here at the World Center of Racing. We'll cover it all for you. Daytona at the speed of light tonight live on TNN Motorsports. Jeff Gordon is the new leader of the Pepsi 400. 12 times he has raced here at Daytona. He has led the race in 11 of those 12 events. He made the move around Dale Earnhardt at lap number 87, bringing Schrader with him to second, and here's what happened just a half lap ago. You see him power by on the inside of Earnhardt, and he gets some help from an old teammate there, Ken Schrader. He goes with Gordon on the bottom, meaning one thing, Doctor, that uh, Schrader can run anywhere he wants to. He can run low if he wants. He just proved that. But there he is, back upstairs again. Maybe the car is happier up there. Maybe the car thinks Harry Gant is driving. <laughs> well, it's green. Maybe it does. It's the green skull car. Harry Gant for many years ran upstairs in cars that look just like this one. Well, it's not very long until we start thinking about pit stops, and I'm right. sure Gordon said, hey, I've got a shot here. I better take it. So he grabs his five bonus points. The way everybody's running right now, the lead pack is tied tightly together by seven-tenths of a second from Gordon back to Wallace. You've got a half second further back to the Labonte brothers. He knows in the middle of all that, Kenny Wallace in 14th, Nadu in 15th, Andretti in 18th. Super run for those fellas here tonight. Andretti, of course, a winner here just a year ago. Led 113 of the laps here a season back. Sterling Marlin, Jeremy Mayfield, that's 11th and 12th on your screen. 13th now, that is Ricky Craven in Ernie Irvin's car, four and a half seconds behind the race leader. Then you drop back five seconds further back, and you'll finally get to the lap machine of Brett Bodine. Earnhardt is the new leader because he stays on the track while others make pit stops. Pit stops at lap number 92 for most of the race leaders. Gordon is in, Labonte is in, that's Terry Labonte. Mark Martin is in, Ward Burton is there. Let's go down to see Burns. And Jeff Gordon's in, they're gonna change right side tires on the DuPont Chevy right now. They went to look at the tape on the front of the grill. So far they have not, now they removed the tape.
off the front of the grill. The water temperature has come down when he took the lead. He got out of clean air. Left side tires are on, and Jim Gordon is down in 19.5 seconds. Here come others leaving the pit lane behind them. The drag race is on while Ricky Rudd enters pit road. So does Park and Pardis. Kyle Petty is in for his service. All of this taking place at lap number 92. Dale Earnhardt currently the race leader. Johnny Benson just ahead of him has already been in in the 26. Johnny's been in at lap number 86 some five laps ago. Well, if the caution was to come out right now, you could see Jeff Gordon going a lap down to Earnhardt, who's been out on the racetrack. There's Gordon right there. He likes that. And he's in one full lap behind right now. Shades of Talladega last week. Again, three is the leader. 88, Jared is second. Bobby Labonte also out there running in third. Glenn Jarrett, what are they saying about the strategy to stay out while the others pitted? Well, guys, on the about lap 85, Bobby Hutchins from the three car came down to the 88 car, and he talked to Todd Parrott. What they're trying to do, they got Earnhardt to drop back, and Gordon went by him, so DJ and Earnhardt could run nose to tail. The reason that Earnhardt's following that lap car now, they're trying to save fuel so they can go to lap 97. If they go to 97, they have run 66 laps on fuel, and there's, a, and there's one lap less than that to go when they return to the racetrack, only 63 laps. So they're trying to make it to 97. Both Earnhardt and Jarrett think if they do that, they can make it on just one more stop. They're trying to save fuel right now. They're encouraging them both to watch the fuel, watch the fuel. You can see right there, though, the new tires are really, really working for these guys as they come up through there. Jeff Gordon's picking them off. He went by Dale Jarrett not long ago. Put him, now he's put Earnhardt down. He is moving. I'm telling you, he's flying out there with new tires. Bobby Labonte, though, being shown as the race leader right now. There he is at the head of that line. If you're a Jeff Green fan, after the accident of earlier, he's back on the racetrack. 61 laps down. That's where Jeff Green is running. As you see, the race leader, Bobby Labonte. In the middle of a series of pit stops. Under the green here at the World Center of Racing. And it's all live on TNN Motorsports. This TNN Motorsports race summary is sponsored by Texaco. There you see the numbers. Average speed of 161 is still some 12 miles an hour off the record pace set by Bobby Allison in a Mercury here back in 1980. But nevertheless, only two cautions slowing this evening's activities. Pit stops are continuing now. As you see, those who are officially done for the evening all with the exception of Cope and Standridge as a result of the accident of earlier. There's a story on Dale Earnhardt's car. He came into pit at lap 97. The nose of the car was pristine. But watch what happened as he was leaving pit road. Watch this. See this tire right there. Ooh. Look at the front end now. He knows it's there. He starts wiggling the car, trying to make it go one way or the other. It's bending the front of the car in. Right here, it gets rid of it. But look at the damage to the nose of that car. That may really, really hurt that car when he gets up to speed. Mike Hogwood, what are they saying? How significant is the damage? Well, the damage is significant. They're pulling a new nose piece out from under the tarp back here. I believe Dale Earnhardt's going to have to come back in here. How about that? Dale Earnhardt trying to make the Daytona double for this year. What he needs to do right now is find somebody, get directly behind him, and then it does not matter that much right on the nose of the car, but he needs to get a drafting partner and follow as closely behind him as he possibly can. The race leader now is Jeremy Mayfield through the cycling around the pit stops. If you're curious, the last time one driver won both the Daytona 500 and the Pepsi 400 in the same year. Bobby Allison back in 1982. Dale Earnhardt has problems leaving pit road. Meanwhile, that man, Dale Jarrett, running in sixth. Let's get an update on him from the pit lane. 
Well, guys, while we were away, Dale, Jared, Dale Earnhardt, and Bobby Labonte all came in at the same time on lap 97. That's exactly what they planned. As I said, that only left 63 laps for them to go. Jared's crew changed four tires and gave him fuel in 16.9 seconds. They had a great pit stop. They came back out of the racetrack with their drafting partner, Bobby Labonte. They're set to go the rest of the way. Here's Steve Burns. Hey, Glenn, we just saw Dale Earnhardt hit a tire on pit road. I'm down in the uh, 28 pits of Kenny Irwin. This is where the tire came to rest. You can see it came off the 18 car of Bobby Labonte. This is the tire that did the damage to the front end of Dale Earnhardt's car. So the story is now beginning to build. Just 60 laps from the finish in the Pepsi 400. Kenny Irwin right now being shown in 11th spot. And there's your leader, the 24, Jeff Gordon, putting a lap on Kyle Petty and following Ricky Rudd around the racetrack. Those gentlemen, Rudd and Petty, 25th and 26th, respectively. Bobby Labonte in the 18. The skull car is Schrader. Jarrett right there watching as well. No surprise as we approach the end of this race. As laps are winding down to see that 24 car in the lead. Boys, don't count that three car out. He's got damage to the front, but he's directly behind these guys. Tucked right up the back bumper there, the 33 car, Kenny Schrader. He's taking her home. Look at this, right up under him. There you see the nose of that Chevy Monte Carlo. It's from Bobby Labonte's onboard cameras. And it's really pushed up. When you think about all the effort they put in these cars at the wind tunnel, uh, a 16th here or there makes a huge amount of difference. And you can see that this is a lot more than a 16th. This is feet that are messed up. But he's going right by the guy whose tire he collected. Down on the bottom side, you can see right now, though, he's given up a little bit getting in the corner. As you can see, Jarrett and him run right up on him there, getting in the corner. Push it off the corner yeah, there. See that? Good. Keep it rolling down low. And Glenn, that could be the story as they work off the corners. Oh, absolutely, guys. You know, as long as he keeps the nose of his car tucked right up behind somebody else, that air dam doesn't make any difference because he's not breaking any air up. He, it's not hitting that corner. It's when he gets in the corner and gets up high out of the, out of the draft of another car. That's when it kills him. That's taking air off the nose. It's reducing the downforce on the car. It's going to make it push. As long as he's stuck right up somebody's tailpipe, he don't have a problem. But he's running in clean air by himself. That's where it's going to hurt. Good point. Glenn Jarrett down on the pit lane. We are at lap 103. You see just 57 to go. A spectacular night here at the World Center of Racing. The first time ever that the two and a half mile trioval has been lit for racing. And it's Jeff Court showing the way back in a moment. Welcome back. The Pepsi 400 at Daytona. 23 cars still on the lead lap. 23rd spot belongs to Bobby Hamilton. The race lead held by Jeff Gordon to go to the top spot at lap number 100. We're now at lap 105. All right, let's test your trivia knowledge, gentlemen. When and where was the first restrictor place uh, plate race run? Problems oh, in turn two. Turn. We'll get back to that in a moment. Problems in turn number two. Dan Pardis from Daytona Beach, Florida, spins off the number two corner. There is Dan Pardis. First time in a NASCAR Winston Cup race. He's from the Arca Bondo Marheim series. And Caution is on the speedway. Caution, lap 106. That man, Dan Pardis, spins off the corner. Eli, you can see him moving around inside the car there. That's always a good sign. We do have a full look at what happened for you. Pass car in line. You see the back of the car just start around on him down on the flat part. Now watch it go back up the racetrack right there. Ooh, Whoa, I'm telling Kenny you, Irwin. Kenny Irwin. Oh. Kenny Irwin running in 11th just did miss. Well, Irwin may be a rookie, but that was a veteran move. Well, Partis has it running. Not that badly damaged either. So Dan Partis brings out caution for the third time today. Now before he spun, we were giving you that Aflac trivia question. 
Folks at Aflac wanted to know when and where was the very first NASCAR Winston Cup restrictor plate race run. Well, I'm not going to answer because I know, but you know what? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm sure you know. I think it's Michigan. Indeed it was. Okay. Michigan Speedway. A lot of folks say, what? Well, didn't think it was anywhere except Daytona or Talladega. See, I told you sometimes I do know. <laughs> <laughs> he knew it all along. So caution for the third time here at the World Center of Racing. Pit road is open. We'll take a look at all the top runners as they come down the pit lane. These stops will be at lap 107. All the leaders are coming in. Gordon, Mayfield in second. Earnhardt, next in line, Mike Hogwood. Well, Dale Earnhardt is in, and they are cleaning the windshield, putting four tires on, but behind the toolbox here, they are still putting tape on a nose piece. They hope to put the bottom piece of the nose on. It is not ready yet. Bobby Hutchins has told me that they have worked hard to try to get this done. They're pulling out the nose. Now they're seeing if they can pull it out a little bit. They have got it out just a bit. The Steve Burns. And Jeff Gordon comes off pit road, just narrowly misses Jeremy Mayfield. Four tires for the 24 car and fuel. And they should be able to go the distance from this point. We'll double check with Ray Everham. Well, pit stops taking place here at lap 107. The work continues. Bobby Hutchins, the man at the front right there, doing the work as they get the nose of Earnhardt's Monte Carlo. Back in shape. Welcome back to the World Center of Racing. Folks, hope you've had a chance to race into the all-new and official store of NASCAR. NASCAR Thunder, now open in cities all across the country. If you want to know where the store is closest to you, just call the number you see on the screen. That number operational Monday through Friday. They'll give you all the details you want. Want something that's operational seven days a week, 24 hours a day? That computer online address, NASCAR.com. That's the homepage for NASCAR Online, your 24-hour NASCAR garage pass. Details from Daytona, from St. Louis. Tomorrow's NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race that you'll be seeing here on TNN. They've got the latest doings from Bakersfield, California. Check it out. NASCAR Online. Dale Earnhardt's been back in for another stop here at lap number 108. More work on the nose of his Chevrolet. Meanwhile, there is your leader, Kenny Irwin. Remember how close he was getting caught up in uh, Pardis's spin up there, fellas? Go yeah, ahead. he could have been out of the race just as easily as he's leading the race right now. Jeff Burton right now is running in second. Joe Nemechek, we have a new cast of uh, people, and Bill Elliott all the way up to fourth now. There is Jeff Gordon. He's running back in ninth right now. Teammate right behind him. What a year for Jeff Gordon. It really has been a dream season, hasn't it? Ten wins. 29 starts. The numbers are just spectacular. No, in 1975, remember that? The King, Richard Petty, 13 wins and 30 starts. 21 top fives, and he won the title by 722 points. You know what he won that year, guys? $130,275. That was the point championship. Then you see some bonus dollars thrown in. Boy. Look at that comparison. Let's go forward to DW. Darrell Walter with 12 wins and 31 starts in 1981. He won the title by 53 points over Bobby Allison that year. Check out the monies there. Mm. Gordon already this year versus what Darrell won for all of 1981. It gets better. That guy, Earnhardt, 1987. Won the title by, what, 489 points over Bill Elliott. 11 wins, 21 top fives. The Intimidator, a couple of million bucks, and change. That's not that far away. That's 11 years ago, guys. That's yeah. all. Yeah. And, you know, if you step out of the so-called modern era, the greatest season ever was, of course, 1967 by Richard Petty. Folks, remember that year? 27 wins. 27 wins that year. 38 top fives in 48 starts. At one point, what was it, 10 wins in a row? And his paycheck for that whole season 
was $130,000. Well, the other night, Winston was in the media center and announced <laughs> they're going to redo that No Bull 5 program. The uh, guy with go, the go, biggest go. grin, guess who? Go, go. I bet, Gordon. Green flag is in the air. We're back to work at lap 111 of 160. It's a remarkable run by Kenny Irwin, rookie, 1998. Hasn't finished at Talladega either race, an engine failure at both. And here he is leading at Daytona. Whoa, Jeff. Jeff Burton looking on the outside. I thought he was going to make it three wide as he come off turn two. He'll go down the back straightaway. Right now, Steve Park is trying to make up a lap on the inside there. I don't think so. He's called out a line. You can see right there, there's our new leader. Kenny Irwin, third race he has led this year. He led 113 laps in Atlanta back in March. He led one lap under the lights in Richmond back in early September. And now here tonight at the World Center of Racing. Jeff Burton second, Nimichek third, Bill Elliott fourth, Schrader fifth, Roy Burton is sixth. Dusty Wallace seventh, Nate Field is eighth, Jeff Gordon ninth, Terry Labonte is tenth. What a weird year for Kenny Irwin. I mean, this is the first race in Charlotte. Has a great run the second time around. Look at those speed down the stretch. Goes to Atlanta and looks like he may win the race there until right near the end of the race. Had a pit stop to put him back, but uh, right up front all day long. Then last week he runs a handful of laps. That's all at Talladega. And now here he is late, late in the evening. There's Earnhardt with that fixed up nose piece. And his teammate right behind him to help him through all that traffic. They're back in 21st and 22nd spots respectively there. You know, you heard uh, Glenn at the first part of the day talking about people making deals. Right now, team cars are beginning. To, if you notice right now that Jeremy Mayfield right along there is leading uh, Rusty Wallace, these guys are starting to use their buddy system a little bit. Let's see what happens here. Schrader's thinking about doing something. Whoa. He'll grab second. Burton's out of line. Jeff How about Burton will be bypassed by his brother also. How about first? Look at Schrader on the high side there. And right behind him, Ward Burton. Down on the bottom side, you can see the team cars of Rusty Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield. Middle of that pack near the back. Three wide as they come to the stripe. Irwin again by inches. Irwin by inches at the stripe. teammates all over this place you're right buddy the 24 and 5 are hooked up the 2 and the 12 are hooked up no teammates right up front there though Irwin the 28 car your leader I don't know if the apron was ever made to be raced on but they're certainly using it here tonight yeah they are I've been down there believe yeah. me that is not car friendly no, it's not. <laughs> look at Jared by your by to the inside he'll make it work there grabs a couple of spots you know who he's looking at on the high side there. You see he knows Gordon's right up there. Gordon's really cool. Top five, Irwin, Schrader, Rusty Wallace, Ward Burt, Jeremy Mayfield. That's how they run, Glenn. Yeah, Eli, I think let's put it in perspective. On that last pit stop, Kenny Irwin, Jeff Burton, Jeremy Jack, Bill Elliott, and Ken Schrader all came in with everybody else. They only took two tires. That's how they got out in front of everybody else. Ward Burton did not change tires. He took two alone. The rest of the guys, Gordon, Jarrett, uh, the 12 car, the 2 car, those guys, they took four tires. That's why they lost so much track position to begin with. I believe the guys are finished sitting in line. How yeah. about a Tarzan sound? Do you hear <laughs> that 24 Jeff Gordon went all the way down to the grass there on the bottom part of the racetrack. You seem to be eating these cars alive. Yes, sir, with a championship at stake, Gordon is driving a conservative race tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mark Martin is back in 12th. Look Whoa. at that. Jared trying to... There was a little contact there. I think the, what happened there was... Uh, you could see Gordon move to the bottom and then move right back out, and he got touched on the right rear corner there by Jared. I about got something around there. I got excited. <laughs> Got Chad Little running in 15th right now, having picked up five spots of late. Haven't talked much about Spencer. His T-Bird's back in 21st right now. 
Why don't we check in on pit road with Steve Burns, Steve? Eli, I went to Ray Everham after that last caution seven or eight laps ago, and he said that was a huge break for them because they could not have made the rest of the race on gasoline, but they can now because of that last caution when Dan Pardis had trouble. So it turns out to be a big break right there for Jeff Gordon. Meanwhile, Kenny Wallace, who ran as high as eighth at one point last Sunday in Talladega, is now headed to the garage area. And if he doesn't come back out, it'll be his 13th DNF of the year. Yeah, it's getting a little dicey now. Yeah, that, it's, it's showtime. The dress rehearsal's over. These guys are starting to push each other around, making three wide down the back straightaway. As you can see here, these guys are going after it every way they can right now. Earnhardt kind of mired up in traffic at the moment. Last lap for that pack of traffic, 188.592 miles an hour. Three wide going into the corner. You can go in that way, but you can't go through it that way. Bill Elliott right in the middle of all that mess. His crew definitely deserves the trophy for the hardest working crew. They have been under that car, over that car, inside that car. They left here last night when the garage closed. Every one of those guys looked like they had rolled around in the oil and the mud and the dirt because they had. Eli has had a beautiful shot as these front guys go down the front straight away here from the helicopter cam. I'll tell you what, that is beautiful, beautiful racing. Unbelievable. Rusty Wallace starting to work on Kenny Irwin now inside, outside. Is he more messing with him and messing with the rookie's mind right now, buddy? Well, I tell you who looks strong to me. You look at the fourth place car of Jarrett right there. He's yep. looking right now. He's thinking about it. If I could just get to my teammate right now, one of us would make this thing a little tough for these guys to get by us. Jarrett this year, 34th here at Daytona, third in the first Talladega race. A winner last weekend at the Winston 500. And running in fourth right now, lap 118 of 160, while the King's man, Antretti, is running in 20. There is the lead pack. Gordon now running in second with Jarrett in third. They shuffled Mayfield and Wallace before. Rusty tried his darndest to get back in line, but let's see what Gordon wants to do. He'll make the low side work. He led from lap 100 through 106. You see Jarrett going with the 24 there as they go down the back straightaway. They should just move him right on back to about fifth or sixth spot before he gets back in line again. So Kenny Irwin gets shuffled out of the exchange there. Gordon takes the lead, lap 122. So Jeremy Mayfield there and Ward Burton in the 22. They're working a little bit together on the low side of Kenny Irwin. What a great car Kenny Irwin has. So he pulls right over the deck to live in the 12 car Jeremy Mayfield. What a smart job of driving that race car as well. Handled himself extremely well tonight given his very limited drafting experience. Here's Rusty Wallace a little while ago getting shuffled out of the draft. Nobody would let him in. Not even his, not even his teammate. There are yeah. certain things your teammate just can't do, and one of them back off when it, when he sees a guy. You see him move up, try to help him right there. We're going to have caution on the speedway for a rain shower out of the corner. The speedway. Caution out for rain in three and four. Caution. You hear the drivers being told Back by the spotters, clear. caution for rain. Think it's rain. Okay, the leader's got it. And Rocky Wines, native of Delaware, atop the flag stand, and there you see some of the rain falling. Interestingly, in turn three and four, the NASCAR officials in turn one and two saying that right now it's dry out that away. <laughs> I remember one time, it's gotta be, gotta be 15, 16 years ago, and I was working for MRN Radio. And I was broadcasting on a tower out there in turn three and four, as dry and as comfortable as could be. And Barney Hall, who still anchors on the MRN broadcast, he was working turns one and two. And all day, he kept going up and down his tower because the rain kept hitting in that one end of the speedway only, and then keep throwing the caution. And I never got a drop of rain 
down the other end of the back straightaway. And all day, I just watched Barney going up and down the scaffold. <laughs> up and thankfully, that wasn't me. But uh, so, yeah, seeing rain at one end of the speedway is not unusual here at the World Center of Racing. It's on our lens there as well. Yep, see it? There you see now the uh, rain coming over towards the main straightaway now. We had a little delay for rain back in lap 13. A caution came out for a lap or two. Lap 32, a multi-car accident on the back straightaway when Kevin LePage lost the car. Others involved were Rich Fickle, Jeff Green, Hutch Strickland, Johnny Benson was involved, Ted Musgrave, Jeff Bodine, Michael Waltrip, and Wally Dallenbach. Then Dan Pardis spun at lap 106, and now Rain here at lap 122. See him putting the tarps down there to keep the pit lanes as dry as they possibly can. Of course, pit road is also open. Dale Earnhardt is going to make a stop. Also coming down the pit lane will be Joe Nimichek. So they'll pull those tarps quickly. Mike Hogwood, back to that nose they go. Yeah, and Bobby Hutchins and Kevin Hamlin go back to work on it. They want to try to make this car perfect because Dale Earnhardt had shot back up through the field. He made it back up into the top 10 before this caution came out. And Dale's telling them, that, hey, you know, we still got time. We can do this thing if, if we get the car exactly right. So they're trying to get that nose perfect so that they can get it to go through the air absolutely the way Dale wants it to. In the background, you see Brett Bodine's car with the hood up. He is in. Joe Nimichek is in. Wally Dallenbach in for service. The other teams, though, can go the distance. Again, if you're just joining us, when everybody stopped at lap 107 and lap 108, they took on tires. Those who chose to, they filled it up with 76 racing fuel, and they're all able to go the distance from there. But a light rain shower crossing the speedway here in Daytona. We're going to break away and take care of some business. More on TNN in just a moment. The 1984 Firecracker 400, perhaps the most memorable of them all. Remember that one? Richard Petty, Cale Yarborough crossing under the flag stand. Three laps to go. The yellow came out when Doug Hevron spun in turn number one. Both of those veterans realized immediately that they were racing for the win right there. Cale Yarborough tried that old uh, slingshot move, made the pass in turn three. And Cale slides high, giving Richard Petty some running room again to come back and eventually grab that victory by less than one foot. A thrilling, thrilling day here at the World Center of Racing. Then, while they celebrated, Cale Yarborough unwittingly pulled down the pits one lap early. The race wasn't over. They just raced back to the caution. Harry Gant comes in to finish second. And of course, President Ronald Reagan on hand to honor the king in his 200th and final victory. And there's the king's car right now. John Andretti is 12th right now. The winner of this race a year ago when he led some 113 of the 160 laps. Now the field about to go back to work. They've gotten the one to go signal, this little rain shower having wound down. Doctor, you see Kenny Irwin right there in the 28 car. He had problems, he made his pit stop and had to come back in. He had a left rear going flat. Steve Burns has the story, Steve. Yep, Eli, here's the tire. You can see right here inside the circle, just a small cut on the tire, the left rear tire of the 28. When he got shuffled out of the lead a little while ago, that's why the thing was starting to go flat. You can see there's very little pressure in it. So that was the story on Kenny Irwin. The unscheduled stop drops him back to 19th position as the field forms up for the restart. Glad you're with us, Eli Gold, Dick Bergman, Buddy Baker. Glenn Jarrett, Steve Burns, Mike Hogwood, and the entire TNN Motorsports team. As for Dale Earnhardt, he's running on the lead lap at 22nd, Glenn. How are the repairs now? Looks like they got it just right, Eli. They came back in every lap under that caution. Now, he'll be at the tail end of the lead, of the, of the, uh, lead pack, but he has drafting partners. His teammate, Mike Skinner, came in for another adjustment. Also, Kenny Irwin, a good fast car, and Jeff Burton just came in and changed four tires. So he's got three good cars back there to help push him back to the front. Got some good guys to run with to come back up through the pack. 
Well, we'll all find out together as the field gets set to go back to green after this little delay for a brief rain shower. Ten four, I will. About every five laps. Ready? Nice and smooth. Green, 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 green flag. Good young, good, good green go. flag. Sights and sounds of the World Center of Racing up to the lights with 30 laps to go to settle this Pepsi 400. And it will be interesting to see if those cars in the back of the pack on the lead lap that took fresh tires are able to run the leaders down. They've got time. You can see the obvious problem right now, though. Three wide down the back straight away sometimes. Yeah, even trying to make it four wide through the corners, of course, two wide. But right now, getting by everyone, that's the problem. That's 13th on back. Spencer in 13th spot with the three wide scramble. And Freddie and Johnny Benson joining him. And Freddie's on the lead lap in the 43. Benson in that red 26 is not. And that middle is not a comfortable place to be at all. Let's so here. Here they do. Less so here even than Talladega. Now they doing that yellow nine. Oh. It's only left and he and Spencer got together. Meanwhile in fifth position on back. He'll shuffle Ward Burton out of the picture. And back again to 12th and 13th position. What it looked like, Spencer and Nadu. Bam! Lightly touched there. You could see Spencer's car, the 23 there, the second car on the right there, getting really sideways off turn two. That could have been big. That could have been really big. Up front, Jeff Gordon still shows the way. Everybody right there with him on the lead lap. This Pepsi 400 far from over. Welcome back to Daytona. This TNN Motorsports race summary is sponsored by Budweiser. Average speed having dropped now with that slight caution for rain. Two of the four caution periods have been for rain. And there you see those in the garage. You can also add to that list Kenny Wallace, who has taken his machine, and now Rich Bickle officially out for the evening. Glad you're with us here on TNN Motorsports. Tomorrow, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series from Mesa Marin Raceway, Bakersfield, California, also here on TNN. Middle of the field, Spencer's on the move in 14, with Earnhardt to his inside in 15. They'll swap that around a while. Those two love racing with each other. Chad Little, that's green and gold, 97. That's a Thunderbird. And you know, believe it or not, for the luck Jack Roush has had on the restrictor plate racetracks this year, the three races run so far, Chad Little has been his top driver yeah. in two out of the three, a seventh and an eighth. Kenny Irwin at the head of that pack right there. Second car in line now behind Skinner. Skinner's 12th, Irwin is at 13th. There's Chad Little. Up front, meanwhile, they're closing in on Gordon. 
This whole pack of traffic here. Now just three and one tenth seconds behind Gordon. They were four and a half seconds back a while ago. there on the low side of turn four, didn't he? Yeah, he's kind of going with one of those more aggressive setups in the car, and it's it's definitely white knuckle time. And it's also a Thunderbird, as you said a while back, the E-Line. Those cars normally are great race cars in a race, but right now they're not faring too well, as you see Jimmy Spencer dropping another spot. And there's the spread from that pack down what they call the super stretch, the back straightaway, up to Jeff Gordon. That's what 2.8 seconds looks like on this Daytona International Speedway. Terry Labonte taking a look on the outside there in the five car. You see him on the high line there. His brother directly behind him. These guys are wanting to rumble right now. You see that computer address. You can log on, get the onboard in-car pictures as we head towards the finish of this Pepsi 400. TNNRacing.com. Check it out. Available to you on the World Wide Web right now. There's the rundown, upper left of the screen. Trader hanging in, Ward Burton on a good run. Raven back up tonight. And there's the, hey brother, can you spare a draft? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, neither one ever won here at Daytona. Terry Labonte, the head of Bobby Labonte. Posted three top tens in the last four races altogether. Well, now we're watching the front group right here run nose to tail just behind them. Mark Martin is a little interval between these guys. He kind of broke away from them. Mark Martin and Mike Skinner now are coming up. And realistically, if Martin could pull down a top ten on a big track like this, I think he'll take it and uh, head back to the house, please. Oh, yeah. After the year he's had on the restricted play tracks. You see him, he's begging them to stay in line. Don't make it. Uh, too wide here. We're catching the leaders right now. You're looking back at Mike Skinner going into turn three, keeping a very low line right down on the white line around the corner. 22 laps to settle it. Jeff Gordon took the lead at lap 122. We're now at lap 138. Still anybody's race. Back in a moment. That's never a good sight. The caution is out here at Daytona. An accident on the back straightaway multi-car involving Spencer, Kenny Irwin, John Andretti, that man Steve Park, Jerry Nadeau, Ricky Rudd, among others. Irwin's car right there taking the worst of the lick. He was already talking to his crew on the radio. We were eavesdropping. Far from pleased, as you can expect, he had a super run going. So disappointing to put your heart and soul into what you're doing and then have a problem. That's Steve Park through the silhouette look. There's Spencer. You see the roof flap having deployed there. Also, the right front corner has damage on it. John Andretti got a piece of it. Come on, buddy. Come on. Like John may have just been hit from behind road. because Probably. the left rear quarter panel has been out just a little bit. I told you Watch Ricky Rudd was John, involved. Stop in the box, buddy. You want that windshield tear tore off there? Got that for There's Ricky with clean. the damaged nose of the Taurus. There's Jerry Nadeau. We mentioned he was involved. A lot of damage to uh, Nadeau's car. Ricky Craven has also pitted for four tires. Oh, boy. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Scooby Doo has seen better days. The aerodynamics of that car could be improved severely. Let's take a look at what happened to bring out this fifth caution. Irwin and Little. Chad Little in the 97 got into the back there, the 28 just barely. 
Looked like the 28 was trying to get by him. Say, they were side by side when that all started, and it looked like two guys trying for the same spot. Of course, remember, Steve Park has an onboard camera. Let's see what we can see here. Oh. He had nowhere to go, and he just took a shot. Again. Yeah. And again. And again. And again. Steve Burns, Robert Yates, and those guys have to be crestfallen after the great run that Irwin was having. Yeah, Eli and Robert Yates just watched the replays. Uh, first of all, have you talked to your driver, Kenny Irwin? Yeah, he's 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 okay. You know, he's uh, certainly discussed it a little bit with what happened. But you know, he was getting ready to go with the 99 and pull up, and there, there was a gap. And by the time uh, you know he made his move to get up, I, you know, the, there wasn't enough room there. So. Uh, Something we learned will be better next time. We had a good car, a great car. Tough break for Robert Yates. They did have a great car. He's at a mouthful right there. A tough break for Robert Yates Racing. Steve Park, they're going to bring that Pennzoil Chevy back towards the garage area. Attrition rate growing a bit now. Billy Stanbridge, Jeff Bodine, Kevin LePage, Hutt Strickland, Rich Bickle, Derek Cope, Dan Pardis, Kenny Wallace, Kenny Irwin. You saw Steve Park, and there's Dale Earnhardt back in again, Mike Hogwood. Well, that nose that they put on, it's it's taped on, and it keeps caving in a little bit. You see him going back to work on it. They're going to try to put some bolts in it to, to give it a little more stability. Dale Earnhardt says the car is great as they put four new tires on it. Now it's a question of time. Does he have enough time to move back up through the field? I can tell you one thing he does have. He has an advantage having fresh tires on that race car. If that nose does not cave back in, you can see how flimsy it is as he hits it with his hand there, trying to get the tape to really stick well on that front part of Dale Earnhardt's car. There's not a lot of structural integrity in tape, though. And it just, oh, it's real wobbly. Hey, yeah. you guys have any pets at home? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have two you have a, wonderful you have, dogs. I've seen your I'm shop dog. We've yep. got a, a dog and a cat. Well. Bill France Jr. I think has us all beat a Clydesdale and it's also sharing his name. Take a look at this. For all of those 50 years the France family has stood as a symbol of character, strength, determination and leadership of NASCAR. Bill on behalf of Budweiser it is my pleasure to present to you your namesake Bill Jr. a four month old Clydesdale fold Bill, congratulations. Thank you, Tony. And when we first discussed the, the uh, naming the horse, Bill Jr., first thought through my mind was that I've seen the Clyde, Clydesdales before, is how much, and be careful, how much they eat. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> So I ever hear the one you heard the one about the horse. <laughs> you know the one with the horse walked into the bar. Bartender said, "Hey, buddy, why the long face?" Oh, I heard that. I don't Indeed. mean I should have said, "Buddy, I should have picked up yeah, another." Yeah, 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 yeah. That is a beautiful little horse. Uh. <laughs> That's not a little horse. Those, no. those Clydesdales. I mean, that was four months four old, months. the size of a normal horse. Very diplomatic, I thought too. And then there's Glenn Jarrett, uh, who I'm sure wants to jump in on this scintillating discussion well i'm not going to jump on the horse but you know i did have a pet un uh, until about 60 laps ago was that your that was louis <laughs> that was louis the lizard and he's gone <laughs> well it's a tough life it's a tough life we're at lap 144 of 160 the pepsi 400 down to its final laps don't you dare leave us we're back in a moment Sixteen lead changes among Jared and Earnhardt and Wallace and Marcus and Jeff Gordon and Bobby Labonte. Jeff Burton has led. So too has Kenny Irwin. Those drivers all done for the night. From early engine failure for Billy Standridge to Derek Cope tagging the wall to engine failures. That is the attrition list here in the Pepsi 400 at the World Center of Racing. Next week, Phoenix International Raceway. The Winston Cup Series will be there, and so too will we. Then on to the North Carolina Speedway in Rockingham for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. And again, 
TMM Motorsports will be there. Then the season winds down at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. It's amazing. Seems like we were just here for Speed Weeks, doesn't it? I mean, this year just flies by. And they go by faster and faster, it seems, as time goes by. Yeah, the older you get, the quicker it goes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Meanwhile, Earnhardt is pitted yet again. Earnhardt, they're working on his car. Reason we're under caution. Again, this is what happened back at lap 140. Panning ahead to Kenny Irwin right there with Chad Little. Just about had him cleared. Almost. John Andretti, Andretti gets spin. tagged there, turned to the infield. You could see the dirt fly. Steve Park tags the wall. Remember what Earnhardt said about the helmet, about how he can feel the air? Well, that would help you in a situation like this, Speaking knowing when Earnhardt, you're Earnhardt, he yep. was the first car by that wreck on the low side there. Yep. Bill Elliott sneaks by. Dave Israel. Marcus got through. Dave's running 24th with a Richard Childress power plant and the real tree machine. And again, Steve Park's view. Ow! He never saw him, but he hit no. that 28 head on. Meanwhile, Kenny Irwin's just come from the infield care center. Mike Hogwood, you hate to see it in this situation. What a great run he had going. A super run. Kenny, uh, maybe your best run of the year going, and I know you're heartbroken at the way it ends here. We just, you know, we had it. I don't know if we had a, a winning car, but we definitely had a, uh, a top running car. We had to lead some laps, and then we um, cut a left rear tire down and had to pit. But, you know, that's, you know, it's fun running up front. Uh, it's just too bad we got in that altercation off the two. What happened? I just uh, thought I was clear and, and uh, moved up, and I just didn't give the 97 anywhere to go. And I just, uh, you know, I'm real sorry for everybody that got involved in that deal. Well, Kenny Irwin, one of the bright young drivers, we saw a glimpse, I think, of his potential here tonight. And no they thought about it. Uh, we've seen him from the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series and move on towards NASCAR Winston Cup Racing. He's, of course, getting down to finish it here. Final 14 laps. Drafting is going to be the story. We'll see exactly who pairs off with whom. As they get set to go, fans have loved this entire weekend. Not a seat to be had. They've got 6,000 new seats being built on the Winston Tower. They'll be ready for Speed Weeks 1999. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, pace car is in. Green, 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 green flag, green flag. Benson not on the lead lap. He's in 22nd, the first car about now. We'll, we'll see what Dale Jarrett can do now. He has looked as if he's got the strongest car in the field for quite a while now. Here's his chance. Well, it's Gordon in the Chevrolet and three Fords just behind him. And Kenny Schrader in another Chevrolet. And with Pontiac from Bobby Labonte. There as well. You know, it used to be that slingshot move was the way to go. Of late on the big tracks, it seems as though you want to be out front. Slingshot just doesn't seem to even work anymore. Well, we're going to have to wait and see how this plays out because every once in a while you'll have two or three cars work together and they can overhaul the leader as Dale Jarrett was done. Uh, midway of the race, uh, just after he led halfway. Look at this. Look at them just flanking out three wide on the back straightaway. Look on the inside of Jarrett Mike Skinner. Gets, Jarrett gets stuffed back, and he will lose eight, nine positions there. Eli, look at the 31 of Mike Skinner moving into fourth place there. He was flying down the Something's back Something's got to be wrong for Dale Jarrett, guys. He's going straight back. Glenn, what's the story on your brother's car? Eli's got a flat tire. He's coming in. He's got to come in. So he's got a flat tire, so he'll be in this time. The crew's on the wall. Don't know yet which one it is, but uh, tough break. I don't know what it is, 
There you see MCI presenting NASCAR timing and scoring. Tough break for Jarrett. What a break. A tough break for Robert Gates Racing. You want to talk about a car on the move? The three car there of Earnhardt. He is flying up to there. Kind of caught up in traffic right now behind Sterling Marlin. That's 15th and 16th. Marlin and Earnhardt. Spencer still on the lead lap at 18th. That's that red and white number 23. More than a bit frightening when these green flags come out and all these cars are so close together. Oh, Dale Jarrett will not make it two wins in as many weeks. Losing the left front tire that was cut down as he now makes his way to pit road. Look how close this racing is. Mark Martin looking right in the back corner panel there. And Terry Labonte in front of him. You see Ricky Craven in the 36 just to the left there in that. Wow, paint job. He made several pit stops on that caution play. Skinner, very aggressive at this point in the race. Did they just touch? And if they didn't, they didn't miss by much. Jeremy Mayfield sitting there in second right now. He's thinking about maybe maybe making a move right now. I think they're trying to break away from this group running side by side just behind them. Time to go. No friends, no teammates now. Every man for himself. Jarrett in 20th spot after the unscheduled pit stop. Ted Musgrave goes to the garage. His day is done. And the drafting is going to tell the story of how this Pepsi 400 plays out. It's a key element. We asked some of the top drivers in that pack how they're going to handle it. So you make your friends throughout the day, and there is a, a degree of loyalty, but, you know, there's only so much loyalty that you can have to anyone. It's every man for himself, and uh, you can only help each other for so long, and then you got to go do what you got to do. You go in saying, hey, I'm going to try to work with you as much as I can, but I can't control every situation that happens out there. But then when it comes down to five or ten to go, we're all on our own. And that's kind of what we saw at Talladega, and uh, I'm sure we'll see the same thing here. And I dare say we will. We've got fireworks planned after the race. Let's see what kind of fireworks we have as the race winds down. Spencer was three wide again on the back stretch. He was on the bottom of that thing. Earnhardt all the way up to 14 from dead last. He was the last car on that group right there. You see him looking over the back panels there. Mark Martin down in the corner they go. Look, look at the, the coach. Tape. Look, at, look at Spencer going inside of Bobby Hamilton. All of that is for position here. Hamilton with the Kodak car in 13th. Spencer in 14th. He'll pass them both. He'll pass Hamilton and Earnhardt. Well, Earnhardt, you can see the, the tape on the nose of that car still does not have it like he wants. Five car, Labonte, that's eighth spot. Mark, Mark, back. Caution, caution for rain. There's a rain shower again. It turns three and four. Caution on the speedway. Here they come to the stripe. Lap 154 goes up on the board at 160. Caution for another rain shower here at the World Center of Racing, the third little shower we have seen here. This is now five laps from the finish. It's not got a lot of time to quit raining for everybody behind that 24 car. Stick around. Rain is intensifying. Five laps from the finish of the Pepsi 400. Every single fan has stayed here at Daytona Beach, Florida. We have had a rain delay three times tonight. Two were quickies. This last one, though, was a red flag for nearly 40 minutes. But it has not dampened anything in the enthusiasm department. There's Mark Martin. He's in 10. See him put it up in third gear there. That's to keep him fouling out spark plugs. You don't want to make it run too, too, too light around here. Maybe uh, foul out a plug. 
Bobby Labonte is in seventh. You see Ward Burton ahead of him in sixth. And Jeff Gordon, the race leader. Right behind Buster Auten. Now remember, too, we are inside 10 laps to go. NASCAR has a 10-lap rule. Only the drivers on the lead lap can start near the front, and it will be a single-file restart. So the 20 drivers on the lead lap will be able to battle it out amongst themselves to settle the 1998 Pepsi 400. Sterling, Sterling Marlin. Marlin and Bobby Hamilton will pit. Think about all the months of preparation for these four restrictor plate races and this one it's going to come down to just a few laps to decide who's going to win it. Sterling going with four fresh tires. Bobby Hamilton. Four tires from the Kodak crew. Might as well. Nothing to lose. Nope. They were both at the tail end. Mayfield in second. There's Mike Skinner. Could be the wild card in all of this. He has not led tonight. There's Rusty Wallace. He led early. And Schrader is not led. Nor is Ward Burton. Bobby Labonte. He has led a couple of times. His brother Terry Labonte has not. Super run for Ricky Craven and Ernie Irvin's car after Ernie started the race but yielded to Craven at lap 14. Jeff Burton, Chad Little, all on the lead lap, 14th and 15th. Elias, they come down for the uh, restart here. There's one thing you can't do with the car on the lead there as they come down for the green flag. You have to pass on the outside. You can't go under a guy to pass him at the start finish line. Just talking to Bobby Hamilton and Third Sterling Marlin. The crowd has been eating it up all evening long. We're set to settle it. Buster Auten will pull off the pace car. It's going to be three to go when you get the green. Three to go. Okay, okay pace car is in. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Three laps to settle the Pepsi 400. It takes them nearly two full laps to get up the speed. Skinner had dropped back a bit, a good bit of distance between himself and Jeremy Mayfield on that start. But he'll make it up in this corner because there's one thing when you're building up speed, you can really pull back on a car. You give a little distance like that. If you see he's pulled into less than a half a car left, back to their bathroom, side by side. Bobby Labonte and his bump brother drafting. Terry. That is bump drafting 200 miles an hour down the back straightaway. Mayfield, who won his first time ever. Pocono earlier this year on TNN, trying to duplicate it. Schrader works the low side in fifth place. Well, those cars running side by side, they're going to have a breakaway up front. Yep, those three cars, those four cars up front are going to just take off if they keep racing side by side back there. Two laps to go. Gordon from the Hendrick Bunch. Mayfield. Riding in ninth. But Mayfield and Wallace up front, their teammates as Ernard throws three wide. And Jeff Burton makes the move in 14th spot. Whoa! Oh, Earnhardt got lost the back of the car. Nearly three wide into that turn. With Mark Martin in ninth. Out of turn four, white flag. Whoa, you see Jeremy looking to the inside, couldn't make the move. Skinner looks to the high side right now. They're trying everything. Gordon's running by the mirror right now. Here Labonte comes Skinner. has caught him, and so has Terry Labonte. Side yeah. by side behind Gordon. Right now they're running side by side. Jeff Gordon saying, I love it. He'll try to run in the middle part of the racetrack, so one car does not get a great run down the back straightaway. 
They mix it up again behind Gordon. Mayfield. Here comes Bobby Labonte to the outside. What a move on the high side, making it three wide into turn three. Bobby Labonte looks like he has the car to beat. Bobby Labonte is there. Out of four, they're coming to the checkers. Trouble in the back of the pack. The lead and the win. Gordon, for the 11th time, he wins. Chad Little taps the wall as he broke out of traffic near the back of the field. The 40th career victory and the 11th win of 1998 goes to Jeff Gordon and the Rainbow Warriors. Holding off the challenge of Bobby Labonte, who finishes second. Mike Skinner, third. Jeremy Mayfield, fourth. Rusty Wallace will finish fifth. Sixth goes to Bobby Labonte. Seventh is Ward Burton. Ricky Craven will finish eighth. Schrader got shuffled back to ninth. And tenth goes to Dale Earnhardt. Jeff Gordon is an 11-time winner this year. Steve Burns is with his crew chief, Ray Everham. Well, Ray, you looked awfully calm on top of that pit box. What a finish. Well, you can't do nothing uh, but. Uh, I want to thank God first uh, for giving us the opportunity to do this. And really want to thank all the people, all the firefighters, and all the people that worked so hard uh, to get this place back in shape for us and, and saved it. And, uh, you know, thank uh, DuPont and Pepsi and Quaker State and that guy driving that car. He's, uh, he's really awesome. And uh, in case all the news media is talking, it's October and we've won a race. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they have gotten the win. Meanwhile, Chad Little... You see him right there. Took a mean lick. He shot out of traffic and impacted the inside wall, exiting turn four. The third Daytona win for Jeff Gordon. He won the 1997 Daytona 500, the 1995 and 1998 Pepsi 400s. It's the 14th Chevrolet win of the year and the 17th consecutive top five finish that is the most in the modern era of nascar winston cup racing mike skinner comes home third a superb run and there you see the nascar inspectors checking out the angle of the rear spoilers they yep. do that before anybody gets to the car exactly right when they pat you on that trunk lid and say go ahead you're okay you know you didn't run the whole night for free it's got to be 45 degrees. Anything less than that, and you're in trouble. For Jeff Gordon, it is his fourth restrictor plate win in his 24th restrictor plate race. And for that young man from Vallejo, California, by way of Pittsburgh, Indiana, the hits just keep on coming. Closing in on yet another NASCAR Winston Cup Series championship. His point lead is now 358. That means he only needs to finish 37 or better in the last three races, no matter what Mark Martin does. 37th or better. And Jeff Gordon would have his third championship in the last four years. Glenn Jarrett is down in victory lane as the Pepsi 400 has gone to Jeff Gordon. Glenn? And Eli Jeff is unbuckling his uh, safety belts and harness there, putting on the cap. Jeff, it was exciting there. I know you were watching that rearview mirror and awfully glad to see those guys going side by side on that last lap. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, usually when they get side by side, somebody breaks away and comes after you. And Bobby almost did that. Uh, I, I just got to say thank you to all the guys at the engine shop. Charlie Seegers, Randy Dort, and Chuck Utoons on it, and all the guys back at Hendrick Engine. This last, these last couple weeks have been the best restrictor plate engines I've ever had. And this, this DuPont Chevrolet has just been awesome. Uh, I want to thank God, boy. He, uh, he certainly directed me and guided me all through uh, traffic today. And uh, in that last restart, I'm sure he was riding with me. Jeff, another giant step toward that third championship. I just want everybody to know this is October, baby. <laughs> uh, everybody said we couldn't win in October. And, uh, you know, we just tried to think, hey, this is a July race uh, in October. And uh, I tell you what, it was just a phenomenal effort by everybody this weekend. Uh, my hat's off to, to Ray Everham. He, he just tuned the car perfect. I mean, this thing handled like a dream. Great pit stops by the Rainbow Warriors. And I uh, want to thank DuPont Automotive Finishes, Quaker State. This is a Pepsi race. I want to thank them. This is uh, a big day for all of us. And this Monte Carlo right here was awesome. You took the lead with a lot of laps to go when you came out on that last uh, pit stop there. Did you guys discuss that? Was that what you wanted to do? Get out front and make them pass you. 
Well, I think that's just when our fuel window was. <laughs> I don't think we were getting very good fuel mileage. Uh, I think we would like to have come in with a few more guys. Uh, but as it turned out, you know, it worked out for us. Um, you know, Jeremy and I worked together real well. He tried to hang with me. I'm not sure where exactly he ended up in that shuffle, but I appreciate him helping me there. And, um, you know, we just came in when we had to, and, uh, you know, I let Ray make those calls, and he made some great calls. Uh, I wasn't sure if we are going to be able to stay up there, especially when Dale Jarrett was behind me. He was real, real strong, and, uh, you know, I hate to see him have his troubles, but uh, we were able to keep that thing out front. Those restarts, man, they were making me nervous. Well, he's not too nervous now. 11 wins this year, 17 consecutive top five finishes. What a year. A remarkable year. 40 career wins and finally won in the month of October. And the celebration and the fireworks begin. Go back again with Bobby Labonte giving us the view. Look Bobby. at Bobby go to the outside into turn three, right by Skinner. Looks like he has a run on Jeff Gordon that he might could close in there at the end. There's Schrader trying. Again, Bobby Labonte makes the move. Couldn't have been more than a car lanes of an opportunity there. That was so tight. Yeah. Watch Chad now. Three wide. Oh, yeah. Got a little help from behind. It looked like Spencer was there. Don't know how much the impact was, but that was a big impact yep. there. He Boy. whacked it big time, didn't yeah. he? Big time is right. Watch it again. Here comes Spencer in the red and white car there. Just a little nudge right there. Yep. Just enough to send him hard into the inside wall. You saw Chad climb from the car and walk to the ambulance. Jeff Gordon is in victory lane for the 40th time in his career. Bobby Labonte, he came home in second. Let's hear from him in the garage. Yeah, it was a great run tonight for Bobby Labonte, Eli. And uh, uh, your last three laps may have been your best of the night. Uh, we just had, you know, a great error there last time. And Terry was helping me a lot right there at the end. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I mean, it wouldn't wouldn't have happened, that's for sure. So, uh, you know, it just, it do were. You hate to see the red flag come out because you're not sure what's going to happen. But for me, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I achieved a lot on that last two or three laps. But, you know, last weekend we went from second to sixth on the last lap. And this weekend we went uh, about six to second on the last couple laps. So, you know, we just kind of turned around. But Terry helped me more than anything. That's what helped. Yeah, that bump drafting uh, really looked neat on television. And, uh, and it really seemed to give you that little ump and push you needed. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what helped me get by those guys. I and mean, we had a run on, on – um, Ward off of the on the restart and then we had a had a run on uh, those other four cars there and then they started uh, mixing it up and uh, so I got to the outside of Rusty and, and one and two there and Terry went with me and went with me all down the back straight away we just had good air because those guys were racing on the inside and and two wide down there and slowing their cars down and Jeff was pulling away and I just had some good air help from his brother he comes home second tonight Bobby Labonte starting on the pole Steve Burns and we're with Mike Skinner Mike what a great show the, the fans got tonight they always get a good show here in Talladega. You know, everybody hates restrictor plate racing, and, you know, I'm not a big fan of restrictor plate racing, but what a show. Good gracious, you know. Our car uh, was good at the start. We fell way back. The thing got extremely loose. Got so loose I couldn't drive it. Guys worked hard, and uh, something popped in the rear end, uh, leaving the pits on that last deal there, and it's, it kind of fixed itself, and uh, it was pretty awesome there at the end. But uh, Lowe's and MTD and all the, all the vendors on that car, is really stuck by this race team and, and I really appreciate that and, and we're still growing it's our sophomore year can't wait till next year I can't wait till next week you know this thing is it's getting to where we're competitive every week and that's awesome and you know something about winning at Phoenix too I know how to get to victory lane there I've never drove a Winston Cup car into victory lane but uh, maybe next week will be the first time this team's really coming it's really doing good man we we had to back up and pull out and go around Mark Martin. He had us pinched in on that first pit stop. Still come out in the top ten. That's pretty awesome. That's that's fast tire changing. Those guys are bad, I'm telling you. All right, good luck. Let's go back upstairs. Thanks, Steve and Mike. Mike Skinner finishing third here tonight.
there you see the finishing numbers. Ernie Irvin's car in eighth, Ricky Craven doing himself so very proud here tonight as the sub driver. Andretti, Elliott, Nimicek, and they do hung around to finish in 19th. There you see those who had some problems earlier in the day. And those who went to the garage area early in this, the Pepsi 400. Again, the point lead is now 358 points. Jeff Gordon only needs to finish 37th or better in the last three races, no matter what Mark Martin does to clinch the championship. What a special night here at Daytona. Yes, there was some grinding going on. There was a whole lot of close action. Sometimes you were riding high and sometimes the night went flat on you. But when all was said and done, the bright lights and the high speeds equaled another win for Jeff Gordon and the Rainbow Warriors. A thanks to Buddy Baker, the doctor, Dick Bergren, Glenn Jarrett, Steve Burns, Mike Hogwood, and the entire production crew from TNN Motorsports. Thanks so much for joining us here at the World Center of Racing. We'll see you next weekend from Phoenix as the NASCAR Winston Cup season rolls on. I'm Eli Gold. For all of us at TNN Motorsports, good night from Daytona Beach, Florida.